It is the 28th of November, 2016. This is Three Men and an Anime. And as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Eric Carlson and Sonic Gav Gavleaf. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing all right. I am fighting off the advances of Nurgle, but damn it, we've got a show to do. He <laughs> uh, was previously kidnapped by the uh, ghost of Margaret Thatcher and Fidel Castro. No, he wasn't. Well, you know, that's a, that's a daily occurrence. Fidel's new, admittedly. <laughs> <laughs> but we used to Maggie. We know. We, 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 we just put out a pot of tea and she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! So we uh, this week's episode we um, we are going to be covering Gav's most recent recommendation, ROD the TV, uh, also known as the uh, the actual TV series that followed up the uh, Read or Die OVA series. Uh, so yeah, uh, this was uh, Gav's uh, recommendation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing some uh, minor desk rearranging there. There we go. Right, so Whoa, okay. ah, a bit loud, Gav. Wow. Oh, got... sorry. Oh, hang on. I know. I forget you're like a competent hostish and, um, like, balance and everything. I'll get back to where it was. <laughs> right. Okay. Fuck off, Nurgle. <laughs> that noise was literally a plague bearer that fell off the desk. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, read or die the TV. Now, um, I um, I found this one. This was re- really weird. I almost didn't use this as a suggestion because for the longest time I remembered this show that I have in on the DVD right downstairs, and I could have sworn for the life of me the story that I watched was about a twelve episode anime, uh, you know, going on with multiple episodes and all the rest of it. And I checked it. I found it online says it was an OVA. Hmm, that, that, that doesn't seem right. Is it a cut-down version? Went downstairs, checked the DVD, three-episode OVA. I'm like, what the fuck? The ha- what the hell happened to my memory? Uh, so, I mean, I looked at the... Um, looked at the, uh, the, uh, the first episode of this, and just uh, based on the... I'll be honest with you, based on the anime quality of the first, like, couple of shots, I was like, mmm, this looks like a low-budget sort of redo. So glad I didn't do that! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna bump it, I'm so glad I didn't. Um, but yeah, so essentially this is, as Peter said, it is a follow-up to uh, follow up to the OVA, and the story continues on there. Um, it's not directly related, other than the fact that watching the OVA and knowing what happened there helps with a lot of the knowledge of what's going on um, you know, in the background, politically so to speak, and who, who certain characters are um, coming into this, I believe myself and Eric had seen the OVA and Peter had yep. uh, that is correct, I had not seen the OVAs yet to I be s- fair, I hadn't seen the uh, the OVA in a good decade now yeah yeah. this is what, what 2003 I think it was uh, I think the, the TV was. I think in the fact... OVA was two. Yeah, the, the OVA, OVA the, the series was two thousand three. Yeah. And the OVA and, was uh, uh, two thousand one. Yeah, that sounds about right. So yeah, um, essentially the story itself is, you know, it's 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 such a um, I won't say a weird story in in and of itself. I mean, it is, but. Um, it's more the focus of it. So, although it is an action show, it's a, it's a, um, you know, a bit of a thriller in places. It's a, a bit of a mystery and all that sort of stuff. It's very much focused towards intelligence and 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 the the pursuit of knowledge and all that, all this kind of stuff. Because mm. as the title says, "Read or Die," the 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 the, 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 the a vast man, number of the main characters are. Bibliophiles, as they refer to them, basically they're they're heavy readers. Bibliomaniacs, yeah. actually, from what the... bibliomaniacs? Yeah, yeah sorry, the, the heavy readers is a fucking understatement. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the most, the, one of the major political powers at play throughout the entire story and the and the OVA is the British Library. Right. 
It is so in the we in are... alternate uh, history here where the, the British Empire yes. never actually bothered to fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But rather than, rather than they didn't fall, they just basically withdrew and let people think they were in control of everything. But yeah, um, right, let's have a look. So where do we start? Characters? Sure, characters is a great oh. place to start. It usually is. Okay. So the the opening of the series introduces us to uh, an author and a writer um, by the name of, and I'm terrible with names, and she's not an awkward one, um, Nenene Sumerigawa. Nenene is the best character. <laughs> And then that is my fucking hero. She is great. <laughs> <laughs> she is, like I say, she's a, she's a writer and she's visiting Japan on a, on a book deal. Uh, promoting Actually, she's visiting Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong, sorry, it's the way around. She's Japanese. She is Japanese. Sorry. Um, yeah, she's visiting Hong Kong on a on a on a promotional tour, so to speak. And she's met at the airport by. Uh, uh, no, it's not Anita. It's uh, Michelle. Yep. Uh, Michelle Chung. Um, who's off to a bad start already because Nene is a bit of a sourpuss. She's a bit of a grump. Um, and Michelle's got a sign with her name on it spelt wrong. I, I, I believe it's a it's a pun in in um, in Japanese. The way they spelt it wrong is something like ni 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 or na na na. Uh, something random like that. Um, but yeah, that's off to a bad start already. They walk out to the car. And just meet this tree trunk of a woman called Maggie. Um, so that's that's a bit unfair. She's not big as such, but she's tall. She's very tall. Very tall, like ridiculously tall. But very um, soft-spoken, very quiet. Um, doesn't really emote all that much. But uh, Michelle introduces Maggie as her sister. Um, which they look nothing alike, so it looks a little bit odd. And uh, Nene is like, okay, whatever. And I forget, is Anita's not in the car at this point, is she? She gets, is she doesn't come into it until they get back to the apartment, do they? I think. It's been that a is, long time since we saw the, the start. That is correct, yeah. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the third, the, the third sister. They're called the Three Sisters. Um, they call themselves the Three Sisters Detective Agency. Um, as it says on the sign outside the, the wall of their apartment. And uh, while they're killing time, um, Nenene doesn't really want to go to a hotel and be lumbered on her own. So she goes back to their apartment with them, um, opens the door, and it is essentially a sea of books. It's like a wall. <laughs> they're, 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 in, fact, in fact, they describe it, what is it? Is, is it a book quake or a book nomi or something yeah. like that? Book slide or something like that. Yeah, they, they open the door and they just books assault them out the, out the door. They fight their way in. They, you understand why? Because every surface, every spare piece of uh, you know space on the floor, everything other than walkways to the important parts of the, um, the the apartment is just books. Every single one of them has been read twice. Um, but these girls are obsessive. Everyone except Anita, Anita King, which is the third sister, the youngest of the sisters. Um, she's about what, twelve? Something like that. Something like that. She's the only, you know, she's the only non-adult we've met so far, essentially. Um, but she's kind of the antithesis of the of the three sisters. She she is their sister. Again, looks nothing like them. But she absolutely despises books she's you know she she comes out saying you know why can't you clean off this this, this mess uh, I'm fed up all these books she, she's got a walled off little bunk that she almost never comes out of other than to you know to angrily glare at people um, her and Nenene instantly just can start butting heads uh, not in a nasty way but um, I think Nenene sees, uh, sees her as a, as a way for her to like unwind a little bit <laughs> by, by, by basically taking the mick out of this young child because she bites back she's a, she's, a, she's very much a hot head is, is an idiot. yes 
Um, she, watching, she, the, like, watching them spar is fun. <laughs> yes. Because the, the slightest little things, I think that to start off with, um, oh, what is it? She starts calling us straight off the bat. Attaboy. Uh, Attaboy, yeah. She got calling it, instead of Anita, she got calling it Attaboy. Instant fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, the, the 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 story you'd think, based on you know the way that the you know, as it goes, you'd think it'd be more about the sisters. But it really is uh, as just as much it is uh, an NNA story. And during the the first night that they're there, um, Anita wakes up and uh, and then is gone. Um, so she she heads out, tries to find her. Doesn't bother waking either two because they're buried under piles of books. Right. And she, and she finds Nene walking through the book the local book district. Um, and she states she's looking for someone. Um, and they, they you, you get the first little bit where it's you know the one thing about this show is although the characters have very strong personalities, they're not one note. Right. So we've just literally gone from in the same episode we've gone from Nene and uh, Anita butting heads to sitting down and actually having a conversation and you know being. <clears throat> we forgot to mention one very important part about this. Oh, did we? Is, oh right, the uh, the the death threat. Well, that yes. Be, oh yes. So the Mag, so Michelle meets her at the airport and Maggie drives them to the meeting with her oh, publisher and her yeah. agent, uh, where they explain that and you know. You know, these two and the three sisters detective agency. We've hired them to act as your bodyguards because of this death threat. Um, Nene is totally not having it. She's like, "I don't need a bodyguard. This is bullshit. I don't care. I'm not, bring it you on." Little scribble censorship across his face. I love this girl. <laughs> yeah, the, the, this, this is all because they were they were they were initially. The, the, this is what I forgot. Yeah, the initial scene is they drive her to her hotel. And they're running late by about half an hour. And literally half an hour after she was supposed to check in, the room explodes. Right. Yeah. They're down in they're down in the street. They just arrived outside and they see this huge explosion and realize that would have been her room. Um so yeah, they they go to the uh, the publisher and the police and then basically try to decide to happen going forward. And like they're trying to convince like her to like you know just maybe you should like you know lay lower. So she's like cancel the book signing. She's like hell no. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> Bring no, it admittedly, on. Admittedly, from what I understand, the book unless I've completely missed a whole plot point, the the book signing. So the the death threat itself isn't actually that much going forward, is it? It's more just of a way to introduce these. That is correct. Yeah. That characters. that is it becomes a, it's irrelevant after the first episode. Yeah, um, well, not so much irrelevant, but yeah, it doesn't. It's not. A, it's not. The, the, you know, they're never given explanation as to why somebody's suddenly given a death threat. Well, they that. do in the episode. It's it's just jealousy from the. Oh, yes, they do. Sorry, yeah, it is jealous. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, my own because it basically they're threatening her because you know she's a foreigner and you know she's having this huge movie premiere. Of the, the, there's going to be a movie premiere eventually of you know there's a script being written of her most recent book. It's going to be a big movie, and she's come over to Hong Kong to do signings of the book and sort of promotion of the movie. Yeah, and... Um, and how dare this foreigner come in and steal our jobs, which is basically what it boils down to. Basically, yeah. He, he um, Skipping along, they go to the book signing, and, and you know the, everyone's looking out for everything and trying to find out what's going on. Um, and yeah, he, the, the guy just literally walks in. Turns out he's got bombs everywhere, and because she's doing a book signing, she hand, he hands her a pen, but before she can do anything, pulls off like magnets off the end, which turn it into like a, a kind of like a spirit level detonator. Right. So if it tips too much, it'll 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 set things. It'll, yeah, it, the, the ball bearing will, will slide to to one end or the other, completing the circuit on the detonator. Yeah, and he goes off on this this massive speech about you know like you say, uh, foreign people coming in. Why isn't his his, his um you know, worth the time and all this sort of stuff. And God bless Nene, she basically just turns around and tells him, probably because you suck. 
Go ahead, kill me. I'll be a legend, and you will die in obscurity. <laughs> she has bigger balls than anyone I have ever seen. She is fed fucking tastic. I love this, this girl. Like, she is great. I, I forget. Is is does he does he draw a gun in there? No, that's later. That's later. Yeah. The uh, guns later. The guns later. <laughs> because the gun is fucking awesome. But yeah, um, we're going for this whole bit. Um, like I say, um, uh, Anita found her. She says she was looking for someone, which again is going to tie in later. Also ties back to the like I say, myself and I think Eric kind of went ah okay. Yeah. Um, but the 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 Peter, not so much. But... Right. <laughs> Well, I, one, one thing I will state before I'm going to say that a lot because there's a, there is a lot that references the 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 OVA. This show can be watched quite easily without the OVA. Absolutely, um, everything made sense. You know, it honestly, helps to have that little bit of knowledge, but it makes sense without it. Yep, no, it made total sense watching it. Uh, I I was there are a couple of moments where you like explain things, but they do a really good job throughout the show of explaining the stuff that is. That you that you might have that you might miss if you had not seen the OVAs, and then they do yeah. an entire recap episode that basically recaps the OVAs. More or less, yeah. Also, one thing about this show, and we're going to get into it as we go, but fuck the writers and mind readers. Oh yes. my god! <laughs> the number of times one of us would say something like, "You know, why does why doesn't someone bring this point up?" Or you know, we we crack a joke. Especially with the jokes, we like crack jokes about the situation, and then like a half, like thirty seconds later, the, one of the characters makes the same goddamn joke we made. Yes. <laughs> there's there's one scene later on, uh, and we'll get to it. I won't spoil it. Well, I, I can I can tell you the scene without spoiling what you know the why of it. But there's one scene where Anita visits somebody and returns something that was lost. Uh, it turns out it's something that the bad guys are after. And uh, she hands it over, and I was like, "Wow, that guy's so dead!" But wait, his head's gonna fall off in three, two, one, and literally on the count of one, he keels over. Yes. <laughs> I was. Wait, what? <laughs> it was a bit. That was the the best moment of the of that sort of thing happening. It was just like, yeah. It was like, really, really. <laughs> <laughs> but it was astonishing how often we'd ask like a question about what's going on or what have you, and then they would answer the question within like ten minutes. It's like yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think it's about episode three, I think it is or two. After, oh, sorry, that's it. After the first two episodes, which is basically a lot of build up, we get to where we are now with the bomb. No, the, bo the bombs in the first. The, end of episode the bombs two, in I say... the, the bombs in the first episode. Is it? Yeah, the first episode oh. has a lot of action. Yeah, it does. Sorry, yeah. Um, basically, by the end of I think by the end of episode three, this is why I said it first. Um, it's got a lot quieter. It's um, going back more into the characters and the, the people and all this sort of stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm liking this, but it needs a little bit. It's advertising a lot of action in the intro. It needs just a little bit of action, and it'll be cool. Episode four, action scene. The yep. fuck. <laughs> They're mind readers, I swear. You're it's right, Gav. It's amazing. Head. They were in all three of our heads throughout the entire series. We're like, what the yeah, hell? Really <laughs> but yeah, um, so we get the whole bit, and um, the, the bomber basically starts... Um... Hang on. It's not just the explosion, is it? Well, he basically starts doing stuff, and the, the sisters go into action. Yeah. Yes. And this is where we're introduced to one of the... For me, this is one of the most creative power sets, because they're all essentially super-powered. Yes. The three sisters are, yeah. And, yeah, and it's yeah. one of the most creative Mimine power sets. Power is Sass. Yeah, Mimine is, the, is Queen Sass. But yeah, the, the, it's one of the most original ones. If you played a game like Dungeons & Dragons, or some sort of MMO or whatever else uh, or even just as a, as a writer and you propose to you know to the, the DM or the person in charge that your power is you want to have tactile control over paper you'd get uh, okay whatever it's paper <laughs> mm, okay 
No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you can do so much with paper, apparently. <laughs> So each of the sisters have their own specialty. Yeah, they're all they're all there's a there's a term in this world known as the paper master, which is a, a it's a it's a school of superhero superhero basically, um, and yeah, it, it turns out the girls are all um, specialists in a in a in a certain field of it, so to speak. Uh, Maggie is a um, a minion creator. She she can make um, familiars essentially. Yeah, she she makes um, golems out of paper. Yeah, um, Anita is all about bladed weaponry, so basically the world nasty is paper cuts. <laughs> oh, gee, oh, yeah, yeah. She, you know, she'll turn sheets of paper into like knives in her hand, effectively, or throw them like shuriken. Yeah, and th when we say throw them like shuriken, we're talking about like sticking through concrete. Yeah, yeah. Or cutting through guns. This is sharp paper. Yeah, this is very sharp paper. Very, very sharp. Uh, this is, this is monolinked. Uh... <laughs> yeah. These are mono, mono edges here. And Michelle is basically all about um, ranged weaponry. Um, she 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 typically summons like a, a, a paper bow, shoots arrows, but she's good at you know anything that's like dart, uh, arrow sort of you know any sort yeah. of projectile basically that's a po pointer projectile. Yeah. And all, um, and all of them, all of them can also create like walls of paper to block things and stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's basically hardened paper to just like, catch and block and yeah, that sort of stuff. Um, and in a combination of the three together, they they basically form this fucking ridiculous team. Uh, who um, not only I mean the the bomb goes off. Not to, to spoil this. This is all the first fucking episode. Yeah. Yeah. The bomb goes off. Um. To absolutely no sort of effect <laughs> whatsoever, because they just surround it in paper. But... Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> because you know they can harden the paper into ridiculous toughness and all this stuff. It's <laughs> yeah, it, it still suffers the moment that you know the basic weaknesses of paper. So if you n hit it with something that's naturally strong, so like fire or water, um, they can't hold the control, but if, like you say, they, they can deflect and catch bullets on these, on these little sheets of paper. Yeah. Yep, and they had um, enough paper there that, like, the the inner layer might have been burned, but, like, you know, the rest of it was, the outer layers of the wall was fine. Yeah. So they, they know what they're doing, essentially. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're introduced to that, and um, Nenene is suddenly extremely interested in them. Um... Because it turns out that well, again, this is one of the things that I'll get I'll get it out of the way. The person that she was looking for in the bookstore is also a papermaster. Yep. Um So yep. she knows about this this school, but she didn't know the three sisters were. Um, also, it helps just uh, one th one thing I uh, skipped over there as well that yeah, they're all papermasters. Also, Anita is, as Eric most succinctly put, a spider monkey on crack. Yes. <laughs> She yeah, is yeah. ridiculous degrees of, of, of reflexes and, and, and agility. She just bounces yeah. all over the place in a fight. Right. Yeah. They 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 all have physical. They all have their own like sort of, sort of niches outside of just their paper mastery too. So Anita's the yeah. fast, super agile one. Bounces all over the place. She fights like Yoda. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Maggie is unsurprisingly tough and very strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michelle is actually. Physically, sort of the most average of the bunch, but she is, she's very clearly sort of you know the very social, very outgoing. You know, she's she's also she the brains of the heart. bunch, despite being a giant fluffhead. Yeah, she she she, she, she outwardly she, she's very much a fluffhead and, and, and easily distracted, but when the chips are down, she's the she's the she's the Sokka of the group. Yeah, she she's very smart and. You know, Matt, and the, all three of them are are actually exceedingly intelligent and clever. It's yes. just that Michelle is the is the bra is the big brain, and she's the leader. Yeah, probably due to the immense amount of literature that she absorbs. No, she she is the fastest reader of the three too. Yeah, yeah, and when I say fastest reader, I mean page, 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 yeah, page, yeah, page. 
just, they just absorb books. That's why they have so many, because they can literally go through like five a night. Um, but yeah, I mean, we get the the blow off from the whole explosion thing. Minane is like, well, fine, you've caught the you've caught the bastard. So, um, um, I guess this brings a successful close to my uh, my tour. Uh, I'm going home. And they they drive her to the airport and they they say their goodbyes and all this sort of stuff and then leave it at that. And while they're basically leaving the airport, um, they they I can't remember how they find out. Uh, I believe one of them. I think well, it's Michelle was reading over the. Uh, obviously, because in... I think she, yeah. Michelle reads the the book that the uh, bomber was the bo- bomber's book. Oh yes, yes, and, and yeah, she realizes she reads the book yeah, and realizes that the. Um, the writing style. This is how much she reads. She can tell that the writing style was by two different people. Right. Certain chapters were written differently, so she realizes that this was a collaboration. So there's someone else and, out there, and true enough. The and the bomber plane, said the bomber did say something that might have hinted at that also. Possibly, yeah. I can't remember, but it was that long ago. Yeah. But but true enough, yeah. On the plane, uh, somebody pulls a gun. On uh, on Nenene, and it's basically the bomber's brother looking to, to to finish things, so to speak. Which is how you know the script is written and... in two thousand and one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and goddamn Nenene, because she her fucking reaction. Basically, she does the usual thing of going or oh, congratulations, genius. You're gonna fire a loaded weapon on a fucking airplane. Yeah. Um, you know. But she does it by basically flipping him off by sticking her middle finger in the barrel of the gun. Well, she yeah. fl- she flips him off first and then does that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because she's all kinds of fucking balls. Nenene is fucking awesome. <laughs> she trucks no bullshit. <laughs> Absolutely none. Uh, she, she goes on this rant about initially she didn't want the sisters as a bodyguards because they're fine. They want to come and fucking blow me up. Fuck them. I don't care. Let him try. She, you know, she's. It's not suicidal, but it's just a case of, I don't know, whatever. Fuck you. I'm, you know, I'm not letting anyone stop me living my life and that sort of stuff. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, never live in fear and all that kind of thing. But yeah. Um. So as it's go- <laughs> as this is happening, then they turns around, and looks out the window, and Anita is on the wing. Yes, <laughs> just looking in through the through the window because <laughs> because she is, and she's like, what, what, how how are you? And she's like, two seconds. <laughs> Disappears down the side of the plane. You hear the fucking warning lights going off of de- decompression, all that sort of stuff, and suddenly the the door just. Collapses in a crisscross of blade, you know, anime blade cuts essentially. Yep. It's been cut, but it doesn't know it. <coughs> and before it has a chance to collapse, Anita comes rolling through like a fucking, you know, uh, like I say, a, a spider monkey, throwing shuriken darts and cutting the gun apart and kicking the shit out of this bomb of it. Right. Even and, just to react. Yeah, and paper covers the uh, the the uh, papers cover the hole. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Yeah. So he did get a shot off, and it basically started to decompress. You know, to decompress the the cabin. Yeah. So they they bung, they bung the hole with paper. Yep. And well, uh, the, and the door is covered up by paper also, and. Yeah. And it turns out that the the, the shot managed to do more damage than expected, and it would cut to outside, where. There's this huge fucking blue eyes white dragon bullshit thing going on. <laughs> made of paper. It's just following the following the plane. Because and Maggie has made a giant dragon golem thing that she and Michelle are flying inside of. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it turns out the plane's in trouble. It's going to end up crashing because of the the the, the shot hit and it, it hits an engine or something like that. So the dragon descends across it, and Maggie basically absorbs the plane into the into the golem. She forms it around it. But it's too heavy, so Michelle cuts the wings off. Yeah. 
<laughs> just you shooting paper blade. No wings. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, yeah, anyway, we've we got Maggie. Maggie's got it covered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you get this great shot from the... Because they've had to turn it around. and uh, Well, actually, no. I think they got to Japan, didn't they? Yeah, they're landing in Japan. Essentially, they've got this great... They've got this great scene of the uh, the terminal in Japan, just looking out, and it's like the the plane from Hong Kong is now arriving, and it's a fucking dragon. <laughs> 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 They're like, <laughs> goes in, lands. They manage to stop it just before the the entryway. Um, you know, the wheels are still down. It's still a plane. It just has no wings. The the bombers um, arrested. And we, we get, we then basically have uh, Minane and her three bodyguards are now in Japan. That's yep. the first episode. Yes. <laughs> it's a good first episode. <laughs> it's actually an excellent yeah. first episode. It does, that does an, uh, a good job of illustrating all of the character, all of the, the prime characters' strengths. Yes. Right, like uh, Anita's physical uh, capabilities as well as her acerbic uh, personality uh, uh, Michelle's uh, how bright Michelle is even as she's being a, a bit of a goofball uh, Maggie's capability of just I think I'll just make a giant fucking dragon of paper because it seems like it seems expedient at the time and the indomitable fuck you will of nay 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 yes <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, yeah. So that episode, it it established, it just sets the tone for the series perfectly. It's it is honestly one of the best opening episodes I've seen in a long time because it just does mm. such a good job of establishing everything you need to establish about the characters and what they can do, and large chunks about the world too, and how important books are in this world. Um, because Nene is basically a rock star, yeah, <laughs> in Hong Kong, yeah. And you know, it's 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 really well, really clever and well done. And all three, all four of those characters are just immensely likable. Yes, it's hard not to just want to see them be happy. <laughs> it's, it really is, and like, like, like the one that's like takes the takes the longest to war up to is Anita, and they get they manage to make you war up to her in the first episode because she starts out you know acerbic and annoying. It's like, oh, she's gonna be the acerbic annoying kid. Great, this is gonna be an. Oh wait, she's had this quiet moment with Nene where she actually gets to like you know, be less obnoxious and likable. Yeah, well done, show. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do a really good job of like I said, they've all got really strong, um, you know, stereotypical character traits, but they're still fully fleshed characters from the, underneath all that. Um, you know, they've all got you know subtleties and uh, and they're not just this one character that does this you know that does this whole thing the whole way through if you give them a moment and you know on their own or with somebody new or somebody they don't have to be that way with they reveal their true selves you know Anita only is that because she's the young sister she's the bratty younger younger kid she's being acerbic because that's what youngsters do you know that she being contrarian, she just wants to act out and, and mm. be a pain in the ass basically sometimes, just for the sake of it. Well, um, she's not, she's not a nasty 12. person anyway. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, t- is it? Well, yeah, she's 12, I mean, come on. She's, she's like pre-teen, it's, it, that's, that's the time when that happens. I mean, honestly, the one who probably deviates least from their own, sort of their, their sort of, you know, what they're presented as their personality is probably Maggie. Mm-hmm. And, mm. but, you know, she's you know the most because you know like none of the, she's the one who has the least sort of contradictions within her and you know, she's you know she's always the yeah. soft spoken thoughtful kind you know strong basically strong man effectively you know she, yeah she's the she's the, Maggie's the, 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 the big introvert that you are happy to have sitting on the couch with you that doesn't need to have a conversation with you while you're, you're both reading or watching cartoons or whatever. Right, and, you know, when she, if, when she talks, she says, you know, important things, and, you know, and she's, she's, yeah, exactly, it's, it's exactly that. She's, <laughs> she's the one who awfully comes across as, like, the most in need of a hug every now and then, but. <laughs> yes. 
Well, she also wears everything on her sleeve. She yes. doesn't bother hiding anything. Right. Like, you instantly know Maggie is, is sad, but with a glance. Well, most people would probably try to cover it up. <laughs> Maggie doesn't yeah. bother. Yeah. But at the same time, like I say, they give... they give Even though she's the least varied character-wise, she every now and again she has some really strong moments where she, you know, she, the, 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 her conviction does come through. Oh, absolutely. But otherwise, she's happy to just take a step back and just be the right. one you say. She, she's, she's, the, she's the biggest person in the room, but she's, she, she likes to disappear in it. Yep. Um, but at the same time, they give a little... little like character traits that are like, oh, okay, that's kind of weird. Like how apparently she really likes, despite her size, she really likes small confined spaces. Yep. Yeah. So as her room, when with, again they to jump ahead a little bit, they end up, they end up moving in with Nene because the their visit is in Japan and they're still being hired as her bodyguards. Uh, they move in with her. Technically, they're legal. And... They didn't bring their passports or visas. Right. <laughs> that too, yeah. They, they rather than fucking dragon, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the other two are happy to like sleep on the couch and, or, you know, set up a room and all that sort of stuff. Maggie basically moves in under the stairs. Like you know, she becomes the, the, fucking Harry Potter. Yeah, it's 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 amazing because like My you know. Choice. You know, so Nene is like, you know, like cleaning some, like getting stuff out from under this little storage space under the stairs because she's like, you know, oh, we'll just clear, this, we'll get this stuff that we can use for setting up for you guys and such. And and Maggie's like, ooh, that would be a perfect room for me. And Nene's like, and Nene's like, wait, what? Uh, and Michelle's like, oh, she likes small, dark, confined spaces. And she's like, yeah, uh, okay. Before that, I, I feel that she basically towards stopped. Maggie. Let 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 just saying that like, she likes small, dark, pl enclosed places. She reads a lot. She doesn't bother with other people's bullshit. I, I yeah, I, I feel a strong, strong kinship towards her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, up, up to that point, she'd been basically stealing a blanket um, and setting up her own little blanket fort under a table. So she yes, could isolate herself you know, under, under a table so she could isolate herself from everyone else. That's just how she is. It's it's a, it's a weird little trait, but I like it. And she is, you know, she is. She is in many ways, you know, despite the fact she wears all her emotions on her sleeve and she's, you know, all this, she's in some ways sort of the stoic wall of the group in that, you know, when thing, when, when push comes to shove, she's the one who stands between the rest of them and the bad and, and the, and the, and the bad things. Yeah. She's yeah. The she's, she's the backbone. Yeah. Backbone, so to speak. Because again, she's, you know, and she knows she's, uh, she's, the, she's the biggest, the, she's the toughest. She's the, you know, she's the protector. That's what she does. Yeah, she often, uh, um, often she and Anita will, will be be a team in a fight where uh, they're both on the front line, where uh, and Maggie just covers in his uh, defense defense because well, Anita is too busy bouncing around and stabbing things to, to bother dodging or or throwing up shields or anything. That's that's Maggie's job anyway. <laughs> While her golems are out smashing things. Yes. <laughs> I think they do reference, and uh, I think um, it's uh, Michelle that basically comments that Maggie is probably the most, um, you know, the combat expert. She's she's probably the strongest in a fight of the three. Yeah, she is. Um, like I say, Michelle has the knowledge, and Anita is basically just this ball of fury. <laughs> But yeah, there's a there's a big fight about midway through the series against probably their most dangerous individual foe they fight against, and yep. it comes down to Maggie basically going, "Okay, I'll just tank this guy. You guys go off and do the thing," and she fights this guy to a basically when she switches over just fighting defensively and fights the guy to a complete standstill. Despite that he's clearly yeah. more powerful as a as you know an opponent in terms of what he's a paper master also, and he's a more powerful paper master than any of the than any of the three individually. But Maggie focusing on defense goes, yeah, no, you're not getting through me. <laughs> yeah. No. And she's like, no, I, I'm fighting, I'm not fighting to win, I'm fighting not to lose while they achieve the objective. So, yeah, we'll we'll be here all day. <laughs> I am the tank, I will do this. Like I said, I have a certain friendship <laughs> towards uh, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of what goes on now uh, from the episode, from the first episode, it is just basically character building, at least for the first half. Yep. yep. 
Um, I don't really want to go through every episode beat for beat because, frankly, we'll be here all day. Yeah, it's a 26-episode um, series, so we, we don't want to do that. Yeah, and I will say a lot happens in this series. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of twists and a lot of, uh, you know, compli complicated scenes and all the rest of it. And I, I found myself, as we were finishing watching this, I was just thinking back, thinking, oh, God, it seems ages since that happened. And it was, you know, there's a, there's a lot that happens in this. Um, I mean, I don't know if you guys want to uh, just, like, help help me hit on a few of the major points. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, it's... Otherwise, I will end up going through episode by episode. Right. <laughs> so, you know, the beginning, the first few episodes are establishing, you know, the, tree, the three sisters as bodyguards, as quote bodyguards, I should say, for uh, Nene. Uh, they move into her place. They get to, you know, we get a bunch of the, the three, the four of them getting to know each other. And Nene basically sort of finally accepting the fact that they're part of her life now. And that, you know, she, and the big thing that Nene's problem is having, she's not written a new book in a while. Yeah, she's and, got a huge piece of writer's block. And she finally starts breaking through when they start living with her at the end, like after, you know, a while she basically, yeah, she, yeah, they're loud. They're, they're, you know, well, Anita, you know, Anita and, and Michelle are loud and Maggie isn't, but you know, they're caught, they're constantly getting in the way and doing things. They're, they're annoying in some ways, but she's finally, you know, a bit happier about things than she has been in a while since her, you know, her friend disappeared. Right. And she's finally able to break through her writer's block and start writing. Start. She starts basically planning out, like coming up with the the outline for her new book. Mm. All, uh, all the while, while this is happening, her apartment is now slowly but surely filling with books. Right. Yes. I mean, she had a bunch of books to begin with, but that's what these sisters do. Or right. That, that's what Maggie and Michelle does anyway. Right. Anita hates books, and which is apparently like everyone's like, "Wait, you hate books, but you're a paper master." And she's like, eh. <laughs> "Yeah." And it's explained later what w the reasons why, and it makes perfect fucking sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but to to, I mean, to to get the idea, and like I said, how well, they, they they try and drive home the importance of the books really hard. So, for example, we've already seen the apartment that these girls had, and in the second episode when they're in there. Nenene says, right, okay, if you're going to live here, then you're going to work for it. Um, I'm going out for shopping, tidy the apartment, and when we get back, we'll, we'll discuss this. Okay. Goes out and leaves Maggie to tidy the apartment. Yes. Maggie knows that when you tidy things up, you throw out anything, of no, anything that has no value. You throw out rubbish. Nothing in her apartment has value to her apart from the books. And places and you can put bed, the books. She sleeps in the bed. So, <laughs> she knows that, and yeah, she knows knows that um... Oh, what was it that, that Nene -Nay said? Don't, don't fuck with... The couch. The don't fuck with the couch. <laughs> On the couch. Yeah, so the, the couch, she knows, is, is good. We like, we like the couch. We know not to fuck with the TV because we broke that and that's the one thing we replaced, so we know that Nene -Nay likes the TV. Um... Guess we okay. throw out Comes back. The apartment is fucking bare apart from the couch, the TV, and books. Yes. And you know, and then they sort of tears into Maggie. Maggie's like, "Oh God, what have I done? I've screwed up." Um, right. And she buggers off, and goes out in reconnaissance with her, with her, you know, with the paper golems to recover everything she got rid of, and succeeds because she's fucking Maggie. <laughs> 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 because Maggie is fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, they try and obviously and humanize as well, but in a really clever way because it, it, expand, it expands the plot. So, yeah, Maggie does this. Um, Mich Michelle tries to be the perfect host, and and uh, you know, it, it, it's not at her house, and she keeps putting on elaborate meals and. Uh, going out on shopping sprees using Nene's credit card. Um, it's like uh, one of the first things they have is like Michelle puts on this this huge like thank you meal for Nene letting her stay, and then as it's all done and finished and everything else, and they're all just like having a chat and all the rest of it, she hands her the bill as an IOU. <laughs> like, what? 
because well, I she catered. I can't cook. <laughs> because yeah, Michelle can't cook. Maggie's the cook of the group. <laughs> <laughs> but again, notice whenever Maggie cooks, there is an open cookbook somewhere near. Her. Right, because Mag Maggie's okay. Well, I, I I need to cook. I don't know these recipes. There's a cookbook here. I will read the cookbook and understand it and make the food. Yes. Yes. Um, and eventually, you know, the but yeah, the next most important thing is that they decide. Okay, right. Well, we're here. You know, such. We've got the. We've got sort of. I have fake ideas for all. We've got you know ideas for all of you. The thing is, is that Anita is 12. And we have an idea for her to live here in Japan. But she's 12, which means she has to be in school. <laughs> so we've enrolled you in school, Anita. Anita's like, wait, what? <laughs> but Why? I, I, I don't... I, I, why do I have to go to school? I, I don't want to go to school. I'd have to go to school in Hong Kong. Yeah, but you do here. But, but, yeah, but, but that's Hong Kong. Hong Kong is Hong Kong. <laughs> I... Uh, 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 Fine. Yeah, we've got, it's, it's annoying. We've already got neighbors wondering why I've got a small girl coming in and out of my apartment. You're going to school. Right. <laughs> so she's like, fine, I'll go. And we, we get this is where we get introduced to a bunch of classmates. She you know, starts off, you know, like, you know, somewhat distant, but, you know, she she makes friends with a couple of them fairly, fairly quickly. Uh we have some scenes out, like, during, like, you know, activities outside where the people are playing sports. <laughs> and, like, you know, a fly ball, based, some, some of the, the boys are playing baseball, a fly ball comes crash, flying towards her, she, like, towards her new friend, uh, Hisa, I think, is her name. And, yeah. like, just before it hits Hisa in the face, <laughs> Anita grabs out of midair, looks back at the boys and goes, oh, screw you guys, and just rifles it back to the catcher. Perfect throw, it's like, at light speed, and they're, they're all, like, could, could, do, do you want to play baseball? You, you could be the pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, she she like does a little bit where she's like really good at things like tennis and bat and uh, volleyball and all that kind of stuff. Anything involved involves jumping and hitting things basically. No, yeah. anything athletic. She's a phenomenal yeah, athlete. She, she's, yeah, she's a natural at. Yeah, and, and she's also in as much as she hates the books, she's she's intelligent as well as you said. So you know she's. Um, you know, she's in English class with the most hammy fucking English teacher in the world. Oh my god. And, her, <laughs> and it turns out her English and Japanese are both perfect. Yeah, she's better than him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which he, like, which... He, he says something that's like typically English. And she's like, no, actually it's this. Oh. And the thing is, the... the, uh, the... Thank you, Anita. And to the <laughs> teacher's credit, and uh, I... He is ecstatic that she that she's good at this. Yes, he loves the fact that there's that there's you know it's like yes this is great. My one of my students is actually really good at this. I love this. It's like, wait, that's great. Good, good on you. But you know she has to join a club and she's like because it's Japan and that's a thing. She's like I have to join a club uh. and like so he's just like well you given how good your athletics you could do like all the athletic clubs all of them want you and she's like. Yeah, but I don't really know anybody. What club are you in? Um, I'm in the book club. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he just like, oh. uh. well, actually, she says specifically, "Oh, just come along with your club." Well, um, yeah, they go to the library. She's like, "What club are you in?" By the way, the book club. Eh, whatever. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. To be fair, with an eater, it tends to, it just translates to her, you know, hanging out in the library. Not right. Really doing it. She's like, yeah, I'll just hang out in the library with you. It's like, yes, I could, I guess, you know, technically we're supposed to read books, whatever. <laughs> I won't bother. Uh, the weird thing is this is the episode where the action happens. The, the new the new batch of action happens. Because there's this dude who comes to the library, he's looking around for something, and then all of a sudden he gets shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> through the ankle. Yeah, we're all like, wait, what the fuck? And then he gets shot through the hand, and we're like, what's going on? And the other ankle. <laughs> <laughs> he's just in the library, and somebody's taking out his, his, his extremities. <laughs> and so Anita snaps into action, and, like, she confronts this kid with long, long sort of bluish hair. And, uh, well, we don't see, I don't know if we see the hair, but we, we see this kid, and she, like, confronts them, and they 
pulls out the gun, she blocks it with paper and like overloads the place with paper and sort of the, the the kid disappears. And everyone's like, the fuck just happened? And he's like, I don't know. Weird things started happening. Yep, casual book explosion. Yeah. Those I'm those totally not a paper master. Um, and this is where we're introduced to. Uh, we eventually see the kid, the, the kid in question, and it's this young, this young, young boy who speaks in bordering a monotone constantly, who's called Junior, uh, who's got this, who's got very long bluish hair, um, and we're introduced to uh, two other people that he works for, uh, Wendy, uh, and a little bit later, Joker. Now Gav goes, "Oh, it's Joker." At this point, yeah, yeah. The thing with uh, this, like I said, this is this is again one of those OVA things. So, um, Read or Die was essentially the story of a character called Yomiko Reedman, who is she's the one that uh, that Nene has been looking for. She's her 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 sensei, so to speak, um, and. She worked for the the secret agent arm of the British Library. Just let that one sink in for a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in charge in charge of that, well, above it all was a was, was a man called Mister Gentleman who basically ran everything. He ran the British Empire. He was the power behind the throne. And Joker was his 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 right hand man. He was the M essentially of the British Library. Um. He controlled, gave all the missions, all that sort of stuff. He was basically the handler for all the superpowered and you know all that sort of stuff, and was the one that could pull all the shots and all the strings and make any other country pretty, pretty much dance and do what he wants. Uh, Wendy was his assistant. Um, very different, actually, between the OVA and this. In the OVA, she was very airheaded, uh, clumsy, uh, heart in the right place, but like couldn't stay on her feet for more than half an hour. <laughs> um, she would, she'd constantly trip over something, and oddly enough, um, it's changed in the in the in the anime. But I've I've, I've, I've found out that she was actually voiced um, by the same person that actually I believe voiced uh, Michelle in this one. Ah. Hmm. So imagine Michelle's I have to do you guys like that high pitched bubbly airhead wanting to do. You know, wanting to do good, but oh my god, I'm so clumsy. That was Wendy in the in the OVA, and then the Wendy we get presented in the anime is, is very different. She's she's quite you know by the book. Um, she's she's essentially the handler to, um, to to for Junior. Takes his reports. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving on, and then she reports to Joker. Who is still like say he's in the background? He's he's pulling all the strings, so to speak. But yep. at this point, we don't know why. But yeah, I, it's been five years since the events of the OVA, so when he's had time to you know mature and become less klutzy and become hyper competent, as it turns out. Yes, scarily competent. Yeah. One of the things I do love about this show um, is that, yeah, we have the you know, the three sisters, and we have a bunch of these people with superpowers and such, and then we have a bunch of these totally normal, hyper competent, normal people. Yes, you know, Nene is you know, she's not physically dangerous, but she is brilliant and and you know, unbelievably brave and just unwilling to compromise her ideals and just like you know, and tr trucks. Brooks and this amount of willpower, like, and like, yeah, she's probably the strong, indomitable. She's probably the most indomitable person in the show, honestly. Yeah. And then you've got Wendy, who's this hyper, who's become very competent. Um, Joker, who is just terrifying in his in his ability to manipulate people. Yeah. Uh, Joker's greatest weapon is his tongue. And, oh my god, yes. Like, like, you let two words out of Joker's mouth, and he's one. <laughs> Uh, and eventually we see meet this guy Drake, who is just this brilliantly competent soldier. Yep. And they do a really good job of, despite this being a world of superpowered people, and there's a fair few of them. Um, the humans, you know, the the, the normies aren't overpowered as such. They still have a place. Yep. Uh, yeah. They're still just as dangerous. Yeah, I mean because. Um, you... 
it, it, it generally provide like the the most of the norm the people who without powers seem to be able like the the advantage they get is by you know the the, the way they're able to get advantage of people with powers is usually by being smart being smart about it. Yes. Yeah. And again, it plays back into that whole the importance of intelligence. Yep. It, it is literally the British intelligence agency operating yep. as the British Library. Building the power of narrative, literally. Eventually, yes. <laughs> uh, we start yeah, getting. One thing about one thing about the OVA. This one is very, and not not just to spoil it because I recommend watching the OVA, but it's three episodes. Okay, the overall plot of the OVA is resurrecting clones of famous people throughout history, so that Mozart can write the song that when anyone hears it will commit suicide. Then building a giant friggin' amphitheater in the middle of the ocean that will transmit the song everywhere all at once. <laughs> yes. Only the only the truly strong and intelligent will survive. Yep. As and that's a, the plot of the OVA. Right, and uh, th that sort of level of bizarre super science continues on throughout the series. Yes. Oh, Beethoven. Sorry, Tachi. I always get that mixed. Mix. It was Beethoven they resurrected, not Mozart. <laughs> 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 oh dear but yeah I mean, they've, they've inserted a little bit of action there but then we go straight back to it so we go back to you know developing uh, Anita's character at school um, Nenene at this point decides to take a bit of a break and she this is just before she started writing and she goes off for a, a little while to have a wander around like a couple of days away the bodyguards are like, well, shit, weren't we supposed to be bodyguarding her? <laughs> oh shit, we need to go find her. Well, I, I think if I remember correctly, they're they're sort of like, oh great, we can just laze about and read and all the stuff. And then Anita says, aren't we supposed to be our bodyguards? And the, the Michelle and Maggie look at each like, oh fuck. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing has happened when she went uh, the the first time she does this and wanders off. It's Anita that finds her mm -hmm. because. Maggie and Michelle don't get past the first bookstore. Yeah, Nene lives inside a district that almost exclusively sells books. Yeah. Um, and um, Anita finds her and follows her, and she gets into an elevator, and as far as Anita can see, she disappears. She goes into the elevator, it goes down, and she goes into the elevator, under, under, you know, goes down under the street, so to speak. She goes until later, and there is no down button. She's like, what the hell? And she's fiddling with the controls, and she sees a little slot. So she pulls out a piece of paper out of her thing, jams it into the slot, and it triggers the, the mechanism, which takes her downstairs to another bookstore. <laughs> because, of course, it's another bookstore in the course, district of... Super book... secret awesome bookstore. <laughs> it's a super secret bookstore. Again, uh, Nene frequents it because it was one of the places where Yomiko hung out. And um, she, she's basically in the hope that she's there. Obviously, she's not. And again, we 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 have an uh, uh, bumps into Junior. Uh, this time, however, he's not in his like full on ninja gear, which he was when he was at the school. Um, so she, we we have that whole. Don't I know you? No. Mm. Okay. But as uh, she's about to say something else, Nenene appears, she turns back around, Junior's batman it. He just, just vanished. Yep. Um, Nenene's like, why are, you talk why, why are you stalking me and all this sort of stuff? And it's like, I'm your bodyguard, I'm supposed to be with you. <laughs> just like... Yeah. <laughs> and Nenene has that one it's just, it's just progressing that thing, and basically it's starting to hint that, you know, Junior's a little bit more tied into the whole thing than blah blah blah, you know, that's that thing. Um, and then yeah at, at this point this is where uh, a little bit later um, Nenene decides she wants to go she just disappears she just wanders right. off and the back I'm, of the I'm wrong they don't follow because they are um, uh, they, they, they were going out, going over there to uh, they, they weren't going over there to follow her they were actually sent on a they do work for this company called uh, Dokusensha Dokusensha yeah yeah Company is an interesting way to put it. Yes. Yeah. Well, we don't at this point we don't know much, and they basically send her out there to retrieve a British Library artifact known as the Key. Uh, 
from an, from someone who's out who's out there in that area. Nene is there for uh, out there for a school reunion, yes, and wedding reception. Uh, so they all run. Everyone runs into each other at the same cafe because, of course, they do. Because the key in, the key, the key is in the possession of this archaeologist, a special agent, uh, Alice 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 Arquette. What a name. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, she's uh, yeah. So we've we've got this situation where there's there's three conversations going on. There's Alice and her uh, guide slash bodyguard, which is a, a, a giant mountain of a man called Drake, who uh, Peter's already mentioned. Um, Nene and her friends, and then the three girls and their handler. The their adventure. handler, Mister Kim. Yeah, Mister Kim, and his uh, assistant John Woo. Well, yeah, the pigeon. The pigeon. There's a pigeon that delivers them like messages and such from 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 the company that they named John Woo, and apparently when they leave, and gets and the pigeon gets annoyed with Maggie when he leaves out the sun. Uh, <laughs> honorific. Um, also, there is uh, uh, Doku Shen Sencha's uh, paper master enforcer, Mr. Wong. Yes, Mr. Wong. He, this this guy is like um, he's basically dressed up like um, oh, what's his name from the Resident Evil series? Eight foot tall of eight foot of trench coat, basically, and sunglasses with, with a bald and... head and sunglasses peeking over the top. He is Captain he, Edgeward. He, yes, basically. <laughs> uh, you know, jack boots and heavy heavy stomps and leather coat and all that sort of stuff. It, it's it's ridiculous. Jesus Christ, Gab, are you describing me? Am I Captain <laughs> <laughs> I'm Captain Edge Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Do your coats go all the way to the floor? Yes, oh. and it's leather. <laughs> Well, apparently. Actually, no, he didn't have a beard, so you're okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't generally wear wear those silly sunglasses. That's true. Well, I do generally wear sunglasses, just... I'm going to shut up now, because I'm just embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we get this this uh, this situation, then, obviously. They, they, they all... As, as, of course, they do. The conversations get a little bit loud. Nene spots the sisters and is like, what the fuck are you guys doing here? Which tips Alice off that Doka Sencha's found her, which Drake goes into action. And, and there's a mini like little fight scene in this uh, in this thing. It's not, not so much a fight, more of... Um, <laughs> a comedy you know, of errors. <laughs> where yeah, Drake is the only one enough, remotely competent. <laughs> yeah, it's enough for people to escape and disappear where they need to. Um, Alice and Drake basically head off to where they're going, and the three sisters manage to tail her, uh, tail them, and, and get after them. And then they manage to tail them. <laughs> <clears throat> so there's, there's a little mini chase happens where they go to this dig site where they're, they're, they're looking for this key. Um, and you know the whole they get all the way through. There's a, there's, a, there's a trap and. And a, a doll that they got to know the exact combination, and only this writer knows uh, this. Um, Alice, sorry, she knows the exact combination because she studied it. All the rest of it. The girls get there and just basically paper golem it through. <laughs> Maggie just makes a giant golem and punches the fucking wall out because, of course. Um, and then an A again follows them through until we get to this. Uh, it's like an underground lake. And again, it's a similar situation. There's a specific combination of things you've got to do. Otherwise, uh, I think it's the the entire the entire cavern is basically flushed out into the river, out you know, down the down the mountain or something. Um, and Alice manages to hit the right combination and releases the key. Um, a little bit of an odd moment in the in this in the series because this is the complete fan service episode where Alice decides she has to get completely naked to do this. <laughs> to because, be fair, you know, she's like, "Have you ever tried hiking in wet boot clothes? It sucks. I'm going to leave them here and I'm going to go and swim out to get the key." <laughs> Drake, bless him, he's like, oh, "Why? Why? Oh God. Okay, fine. Oh, God, that makes sense." Okay, I'll just face this way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep an eye out for people sneaking up on us over this way. Yeah. 
<laughs> and fails to see them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, as, it, as, it's, as it's going on, the three girls arrive and, you know, ask what the hell's going on. We need that key. We've been employed to get it. Um, because, yeah, this is how the girls survive. They, they work for Doka Shensha doing these sort of jobs. Um, which is why, you know, they all have these combat skills and Maggie's a, uh, uh, sorry, and Anita's a super ninja bilinguist and all this sort of stuff because they've travelled the world doing this sort of stuff. Um, and indeed, it's how they met, as we get a flashback later on. And while they're having this whole conversation, uh, Mr. Wong shows up. Um, and he's not a very nice guy. No. No, he's kind of a I mean, we've seen him previously. We've skipped over another mission they did where they yeah. met the, the dude in the castle. Right, but we're not we're not going to go through every episode, so it's fine. But... No, not every episode, but there is a bit. It just basically shows how ridiculous the, the whole situation yeah. gets. Yeah, he's... Yeah, it's, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's another episode of super science and bizarreness and literary references. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mr. Wong basically starts revealing his, his ability, and he's, he's an absolutely brutal papermaster. Yeah. Um... I mean, he, he, he he's basically like, he attacks to the point where, um, you know, Drake can't handle him, can't fight him off. And when you, he, he does like a shuriken throw at Drake, and good lord, Drake's arms are opened up like fucking crevices of just, just paper cuts and just gashes. Yeah. Um, it's not like Drake so, just let it happen. He was, he was being a dodgy motherfucker. Yeah, and the sisters are just defending themselves with paper and it's breaking through their walls as well. It's just, like, pushing through. Um, they're not really getting involved because they don't know what's going on. Um, and Wong eventually basically gets hold of Alice. Um, rips the key from around her neck. Well, he, she, she, basically he you know demands that she turn over the key and she says, oh, fine, I surrender, here's the key. Yeah. And then he kills her. Yeah. Yes. Which infuriates Drake and and the sisters. And then they're all like, yeah. oh fuck you. Yeah, it's not that it's just it just it doesn't just kill her. It's that he goes to the whole effort of forming essentially what is a giant paper claw and just impaling her like five times yeah. on the end of the, the hand. Just, just, just completely annihilates her. Yeah, he he does it. He's more than a little um, excessive. <laughs> yeah. Um. And yeah, it's. I mean, we've seen uh, again. This is why I brought up the original scene because we saw earlier where Wong, um, the girls completed the original mission, and one of the henchmen was out to take revenge so to speak and Wong just appears behind him and breaks his neck and it's like oh okay so he's basically just the efficient like he's the cleaner guy okay he's the cleaner that's fine no no he's not he likes to make his own messes yeah yeah and the only reason they escape is because Drake remembered what he said what what uh, Alice said about flushing the 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 hits the wrong button on the thing and, and and flushes the cavern and they all get washed out to the river. It's pretty much uh, the only reason they survive because even Mr. Wong has trouble dealing with wet paper. Yes. And eventually, as they as everything settles down, they meet back up with Duck Accenture. Drake's already gone. And uh, Mr. Kim's there. Mr. Wong's behind him like nothing happened. The, the girls are just glaring daggers at him. And um, to rub salt into the wound, they they hand over the payment, and it's half of what they were expected to get because they had to, you know, a doctor said you had to step in and do the job themselves. Uh, you know, this is just just pissing the girls off beyond all belief. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. I like, did the uh, job. Uh, it was your goon that fucked everything up. <laughs> yeah, and he, uh, to the point where Anita basically grabs the money and throws it back in his face. So I just need a drink. No problem. But yeah, so from there, you know, it's 
so we've gotten to see a bit of the darker side of Doku Sensha there, um, shall we say. Yeah, it, it, this is where we learn that Doku Sensha is not a, a, a pleasant company that occasionally requires the discreet uh, skills of some superpowered women. No, they're, they're, they're probably the bad guys. Yeah, they're the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the girls, <clears throat> the girls basically have worked as mercenaries for them. Yeah, and um, like I said, they're, they're not officially affiliated, but they take jobs from them. Um, it's just that Doka Central are basically smart enough to give these girls jobs that they'll actually complete. So they don't yeah. give them, they don't give them the uh, you know dead or alive sort of. Job. Yeah, they don't they give them the the, the, the the wet work. Yeah, or or <laughs> the the scorched earth stuff. It's like go get the book for us. What book is it? Yeah. It's a book that looks like this. It's uh, called the, the the Book of Supporting Bones. You know, it, really rare, but otherwise unimportant. Just get it back for us. The Book of Pulsing Flesh. Go get that for us. You know, it's, yeah, it's generally, it's rare, but generally, otherwise unimportant. <laughs> general recovery jobs, and it's always books, because these girls value books. And Tokushinsa, to, to their credit, also very much values books. Different reasons, but yes. Yes. <laughs> um, again, from this, though, we go back to suburban life. You know, we go back to, to, to the everyday. Um, obviously, it's, a, it's a, a bit of a harrowing thing, and the, the girls are basically rethinking their line of employment, but they go back to, you know, to the real world. Um, I'm sure I think now, so... There's the point where they get sent back to Hong Kong, but I can't remember where that is. Well, uh, so yeah, it, after a little while, basically, um, you know, we have more school stuff. We have more stuff where we see interactions. There's some interactions between Joker and Doku Sensha also. Yes. Uh, it's it's he's sort of making overtures that because he, the British Library basically apparently fell and the British Empire has been sort of wrecked during at the end of the... yeah at the at the end of the OVA basically the entire the whole thing is to to, to take down uh, what's called the Great Men incident um, basically everything is outward um, again uh, Yomiko and you know just again to spoil it a little bit further Drake as well he was part of Yomiko's group. Uh, and a third member we haven't met yet. Um, they basically took down. They had to just take down everything to to, to save the world, and that included uh, the great men and the British Library. Um, that wasn't. It wasn't all done in during the OVA, but again, it gets explained later on the you know the, the final nail, so to speak. But yeah. Right. So at any rate, um, so at this point. Uh, Yomoko's agent, uh, and you know, for the, through the publishers, basically says, "Well, she's writing again. She's safe. Everything's fine. We don't need your services anymore to the Three Sisters. So uh, you guys should probably head back to Hong Kong." Yeah, yeah. Um, and they basically, so they basically, you know, they're 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 all like, "But we kind of liked it here. We like being with Nene, but but, but we so don't. If we're actually not being paid, we don't have a reason. We we legally can't stay here." Um, so uh, yeah, I guess we're going. Yeah, it, it hits it hits Anita the, the hardest because obviously she's been at school now for a couple of months and she's made friends and all this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, they, they focus on her because the other two are like, okay, well, we don't really have any ties here, so I suppose we could, you know, oh, oh well, we have to go home. Or Anita's like, no, fuck you. But you know, they all they all basically come to accept it. Um... There's a wonderful little couple episodes with Anita at school and her and her her friend Hisami. Um, you know, and because they bond over books. And yeah, frogs. yep, and frogs. Yes, <laughs> Anita likes frogs a lot, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> whereas the other girls collect books, Anita has a growing collection of frogs. I'm not yes. sure why. <laughs> That's never actually explained, but whatever. But yeah, um, Anita. We also get the ba little sort of uh, we get a flashback to the how the three sisters met. Um, yeah, they basically reveal that they're not actually sisters. Um, 
Again, a bit of a, not a spoiler as such, but you can kind of tell based on the fact that the character models are nothing alike. But um, essentially, they're a g group of three women that met. Uh, again, Maggie and uh, Michelle were doing a job for Doka Sencha. They were both sent on the same job, and they bumped into a neat dirge where they were investigating. Uh, because Nito was, Nito was homeless and living in the building in question. Yeah. And it was about Christmas time because, of course, it was because that's a great story. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually a really good cool um, Christmas. Uh... And essentially, they, they end up adopting each other, essentially, as a family, um, regarding each other as sisters and, and basically calling each other sisters. To, to anyone not familiar with the story, they, they're sisters. Yeah. It's actually a really sweet episode. Um... Yeah, it's a, it's a great little Christmas episode. I mean, there, there's there's some Christmassy. Yeah, there's some there's some brief moments during it where you get really sort of a matchstick girl vibe from Anita, but it doesn't end tragically. So, hooray! Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, you know, she's a, she basically gets she tells them off, and they sort of go off, and the both Maggie and Anita and and Michelle basically decide, well, you know what. Anita has nothing, and we have, you know, we, we should... She deserves she deserves a decent Christmas with somebody. So we'll give her this book, because I like this book, and a blanket, and food, and I'll hang out with her. And then the other one shows up also. With the exact the same, same book. <laughs> <laughs> and like, so, yeah. Maggie, sh the, uh, Michelle shows up with the book, and, you know... You know, on offers a place to stay and and such, uh, you know, with her, and you know, you know, way to keep her warm. And Mich and Maggie shows up, you know, th you know, with the with the book and you know, offer to pay for food and stuff. And the three of them decide. And you know, Michelle comes up with the idea for the three of them to become sisters and live together. And you know, which ends up being, you know, of course, being the best Christmas present of all for for Anita and for the, yeah. all three of them, honestly. It's a really sweet episode, and really, really well done. And, and Nene -Nay sort of unofficially adopted during it. Yes, this, this is all. Well, that, yeah, the, the, t the telling of the story has been basically telling Nene -Nay how they, you know, how they met. So it comes back, and she's in tears. Yeah. As soon as you realize that she's crying, she's like, "No, no, I'm not crying. We you, you mean I'm crying. You're crying." <laughs> that's what I think she actually about. says that because Nene Nay is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as, as, a, as a final sort of uh, thing, as they're um, as they're about to, to head off home, the, the last thing they, they they do is there's a the little party they have. Yeah, the author's the author's party that they have. Yeah, well, that, that's the episode where the that the author's party is the episode where uh, is the oh, Christmas shit, episode. The fan, yeah, but have the, have the girls already gone at that point? I forget. No, the the, the author's party is where the cameras are there. It's no, yeah. the author the author's party is where uh, leads up to the bit where they they tell her her their backstory. It's the Christmas episode. It's a, yeah. the author's party is a Christmas, oh, Christmas, right, Christmas okay. party. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, right. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, essentially they have they have this party um, where essentially it's, it's the the annual party they always have for new authors to to come out and you know release their first work. And I'm looking for Nene -Nay because this is how she got her start. Um, but she feels you know she's going through the whole embarrassment of being of having writer's block and all this kind of stuff, and she doesn't really want to. To be there, she doesn't want to because she doesn't feel like she's a competent writer. And up in the middle, out on it by some bitchy, like uh, old teacher of hers, saying, "You know, you haven't produced anything in a while. What, what makes you think you can call yourself a writer and all this sort of stuff?" Her editor, who's been her strongest uh, like fan, time attempts to put this woman in her place. Um, yeah, ends so up getting scored out uh, politely, also. Um, but it's it's enough for Nene because she stands up on stage, gives her like speech, saying as a former winner of this award, blah blah blah, and stands up and explains you know why she writes and what she writes for, and 
um, white and basically shuts the, the woman up on her own. Yeah. Um, and there's a nice little scene. Yeah, so this this is all the same episode as the one we've just mentioned, by the way, with the, the story. They do a lot in each episode. Um, and yeah, she comes out and thanks the uh, the editor for, you know, just at least somebody in the room standing up for her and gives him his Christmas present of a little flip lighter that it's in a case. She's had it in a like uh, she's had it like seal in a case for him because she knows that he's given up he's given up smoking until she writes a new book. Right. That she's managed to get a hold of his old lighter and, and frame it for him and say, oh, "There you go. I, I will write a new book, but you know, you might need this. You'll, you you might need this uh, sooner than you think." It's a nice little scene, and then we go home, and then the story of the Christmas, you know, the, the meeting and all that sort of stuff is given. It's all, it all goes through. All the same episode, like I say, every now and again they'll get one episode where you're thinking, Jesus Christ, how much did they get in here? <laughs> and it's not rushed either. It's really well well, well paced. Yeah. At any rate, uh, they end up back in Hong Kong. Um, and uh, So yeah, they they end up being export um they, 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 deported. Right. And Nene goes with them. She basically, you know, you know, she get you know, they get leaves her tells them, you know, she they have a standing invitation to come visit her whenever they want to, and she goes back with them to Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, and uh they arrive at the Hong Kong apartment and then a horde of Doku Shensha soldiers ambush them in the apartment. Um and to, they're there to capture an NNA, and we're saying, oh god, and someone, this guy walks in, and you hear this click of a lighter, and you look up, and it's the lighter that NNA gave her, ag her, her agent. And you're like, oh fuck! Because it is in fact him, and he's been yeah. playing her the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> he's been working for Doku Senshi the entire time. And this is where the plot starts to ramp up. Mm -hmm. So we, we start getting into a lot more of the bullshit science. We've, we've, we've spent the last 10 episodes or so now building the characters and establishing everything. And, yeah. So it turns out that he's been working for Doku Sencha the entire time to get her back writing. Um, to, to inspire her to, to start creating work again. Because the one thing that Doku Sencha are after is, and the way they put it is, they're after her talent. Um essentially what the, what they're trying to do uh, again I've, I've ex obviously explained the OVA they were after the perfect song to do what you know to take over the world what they're what Duke said you're essentially after is the perfect story uh, um the, the perfect novel the perfect book um that will uh, you know be written in the perfect language um which will allow them to, to take over the world never really explained how how that will happen, but that's the you know that's the how they present it. Uh, that, yeah, the implication they've, been, they've been experimenting with injecting knowledge uh, of the of the perfect language to for this perfect story into people um, forcibly, and yeah. uh, well, everyone keeps on ending up dead or vegetableized. <laughs> yeah, they, they have one guy who was completely illiterate, and they managed to get him to normal intelligence, as they refer as they phrase it. Um, he pissed himself on the table, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, and yeah, they keep trying it with these other people, and you, you get the impression that's the intention they got for Nene. Yeah, that is the intention they have for Nene. They're, they're going to jam the the per all, all this knowledge into her head, and then she's going to write the book because that's how it's going to work. Fuck you. <laughs> and I think the implication is that the that people reading the book will be indoctrinated by it, basically. Yes. Essentially, yeah. It will basically give control of the world to Doctor Sencha because the book said so. So, um, and basically, he basically pays the sisters, you know, the, the agent pays sisters a whole bunch of money and basically tells them, you know, yep, your, your job's done, don't bother coming after her. Uh, it, it'll just get it'll just get you and her killed, and it's, it's just business, anyways. 
Mm. Um, <clears throat> and you know, and they're all sort of looking at the money, and they're like, and Anita's like, "We got to go save her." They're, they're, they're sitting there. Well, yeah, Anita's raging from the moment it happens. You know, she's like, yeah. "Fuck you! I'm going to slice your throat out," sort of thing. And the other two were just sat there in silence, saying, "Okay." Okay, and they leave. No argument, and Anita's raging, and she gets as angry at the the, 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 the sisters as she does the Doctor Sentia because like they're like, "The fuck? Why did you let them take her? What are you doing?" And all the rest of it. And they have this little thing we'll call a uh, a three sisters conference, <laughs> which is basically because there's three of them. If there's a decision to be made, you know, consensus wins. It's two out of three. Um. And generally, they do it as a little bit of a joke, just to when when Anita doesn't like something, they'll generally call it like, that it's good for her, like going to school. They'll call a consensus, okay? And it's like, okay, should Anita go to school? Those against? Anita raises the hand. Those for? The other two raise the hand. It's decided. She's like, this is unfair. Fuck you. <laughs> um, and, and so yeah, they call it. They call it. Yeah. Sorry, it... I'm 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 lagging out. I'm I'm talking over you guys because I can't hear anything. Okay, don't um, worry about it, Gav. Yeah, so they do this again, and this time it's like, okay, who wants to fuck all his money off and go and rescue our friend? And Neat is like, I do. And the other two raise their hands as well. And she's like, ah, he got me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they... they... They go all commando raid superhero on the Dokushensha, um tower in the middle of Hong Kong, and it's a giant fucking tower. It, it's it's pretty cool though how they do it. It's like they they walk in, um, dressed how you see them on our title card here, um, in essentially combat fatigue, combat geese. You know, they're, they're they're almost magical girl outfits essentially. Um. And this this is basically these are their combat uniforms. And they walk in with with suitcases and they just go to the front desk and they're just like, Hi, how can I help you? She goes, Hi, we're here to find so and so's name and rescue our friend. What? <laughs> yeah, you've kidnapped her. She's up she's up in the in the tower. Can you tell us where she is? And there's like Okay, paper everywhere <laughs> <laughs> and the security in the in the lobby. <laughs> I, think we, I think we lost Gav there. Yeah, Gav, you cut out. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm either lagging out really hard. Um, give me a sec. I keep getting silence from you guys, and it's uh, it's it, it's like there's nothing happening. Huh. <clears throat> okay, I've shut down a few things, so that should improve it. Okay, but yeah, so they end up as Gav said, they 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 are not subtle about this. <laughs> No, no they, they're they like fuck you. We're going in, <laughs> and so they start fighting their way through. And you know, Dokusensha deploys a bunch of anti, you know, a bunch of things to help to fight against them. None of which are working. They deploy robots and such, and they kick the robots' asses. And it's glorious. Yes. And then out comes Mister Wong, and they start fighting him, and he just starts wrecking them. They he just starts powering through all their paper const all their paper construct tricks. You know, he basically yeah, tears their, their, their shenanigans. Like, like, um, like his constructs just get backhanded off the the rail. Literally, he literally tears apart one of her constructs with his bare hands. Yeah, it's <laughs> just like, oh, oh, yeah. And uh, I mean, they're pulling out all the tricks. There's one thing that they do where, um, is it a neat? I think it's a it's Maggie throws um this construct. Which is this huge ball of hot pod style explodes around it, and Anita is uh, not Anita, and um, Michelle's inside it. Yes, like in a like with arrows and shit, and they're trying everything, and, and Wong's just like no. And this is where Maggie goes. Okay, you two go get Nene. Nene I will tie him up. During all of this, Joker has brought all these books that they've been that the that have been being collected throughout the show, uh, and like and is having and like you know and 
to Dokusensha because it's part of the deal that he's made with them. And so the books are there, and they're sort of analyzing this stuff, and they're collecting data as they're pre prepping NNA for the thing. And, you know, he's like, and so he, it's very clear that he and uh, Wendy are up to something. And so they start trying to infuse the perfect language into uh, into Nene, and God bless her. <laughs> she is having none of it. No. Yeah. It gets to about 10% does the download, and then you get a great line, and it's like, everybody who's ever used a PC ever has thought this. But yeah, she, she, she gets to about 10%, and then the guy looks at the screen, he's like, wait, how is the download going backwards? <laughs> Nenonet is saying, fuck you. <laughs> and Nenonet is just basically fighting it so hard, she's forcing the information back out of her head. <laughs> yeah. We're, we were not kidding when we said indomitable. Yeah. Like, you're a super science, like, personality overriding uh, torture machine? Fuck it. Not, not worried. I can handle it. Yes. Yeah, so her agent, so her agent, sure. agent comes in talking to her, uh, and she's basically saying, "Yeah, I'm going to fight it every step of the way, because in the end, you're doing this. It won't be my book." Because he's like, "But you're this book that you're going to write for us will be let will make you a legend. It'll be great." And she's like, "But it won't be me. It won't be my book." Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Huh?" And she, and she basically says. Were you lying to me all the time that you were a fan of my work? Because, you know, it seems like you were. And he's like, um, fuck. Kind of, sort of. But <laughs> yes, but no, but I, I don't know. He starts having a bit of a crisis of con con confidence, you know, and con conscience. Yeah. When yeah. she basically just starts laying into him and pointing out, like, all just the, how awful what's being done is. Because, and is right, it wouldn't be her book. It, it, it because you'd be changing what is fundamentally her therefore anything produced by her wouldn't actually be her it would be whatever whatever came out on the other end and it's she's right it, it's clear and obvious and I can understand why people the people of Dokuchensha wouldn't make it click wouldn't, wouldn't make that connection because it's they they themselves aren't creators. They they don't make anything. Right. Except for conspiracies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at, this, at this point, because of this, the fight between, um, you know, the fight between the girls and Wong has got to a standstill, as, as Peter mentioned earlier on, um, it gets to the point where it's just Maggie versus Wong. She tells the other two to go off and rescue Nene. There's this monumental battle with everything getting fucked um, going on there the other two girls are still loose the the duck essential guys are getting pretty fucking worried Mr. Kim's already on his way for the door um, because he is not an idiot <laughs> and right. he, like again Peter said a minute ago that you know Joker and Wendy start putting their their, their, their secondary plan into, into action and yeah this is, this is oddly enough this is the point where John Woo joins the good guys yes the doesn't pigeon. really do much but for some reason, the pigeon now just tells Mr. Kim to go fuck himself, essentially. Yep. It's a weird thing. It's like Kim can understand it because every now and again you'll see him turn to the pigeon and be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so, and we see like Junior lurking around in the basement, like fiddling with machinery down there and planting things yeah. on, the, on it. And like Joker basically, uh, like, and basically, so the Doka scientists are like, yeah, we gotta back up all the data and get the hell out of here. And Joker goes, Wendy, why don't you help them? And he turns and leaves. And Wendy sort of nods, walks up towards them, and you see her readying a gun. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so all hell breaks loose. Uh, Michelle makes her way into the uh, into the command center while. Uh, uh, Anita basically goes to the room where, where Nenene is. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so, I trying to remember what happens at this point. So, Michelle basically holds off a bunch of troops, but eventually falls and is saved by Junior, if I remember correctly. Because yep. they met, Junior is sort of part of, was part of the school that Anita was at, and, you know, Anita basically befriended Junior and 
uh, Michelle took, took, took basically, oh my god, he's adorable, I love him, can, can we keep him, please? Yes. <laughs> she sort of quasi-adopted him as a brother at this point. Uh, and Junior has responded to that because she's one of the few people who's shown him genuine affection. Yeah, the, the, the closest person we, we see uh, do that is uh, Wendy, was her name? Yeah, Wendy. Right, is Wendy. And she always keeps a professional distance. Right. So, uh, and, and, and Anita, who... The, 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 the preteen... I, I'm not sure how to describe it. I, I'm, for some reason, at a loss for words. The... They're going to end up a couple. They just have to fight first. <laughs> it sort of seems like it first, but it's never. That's never really the thing in the show. It, it they're yeah. friends it, is what it boils yeah. down to. Yeah. They, they do. They do the, the really sensible thing in this one, where yeah, okay, they, you've got two, two same age, but this isn't. Uh, you know, this isn't a love story. There's none of that going on. Just because they happen to be the same, the, you know, the only two characters of, of, of that age group, you know, they're not automatically going to be end up just together because the plot says so. They're just friends. That's it. Right. Um, yeah, but yeah, the power of narrative. <clears throat> right. So, <laughs> and, you know, uh, Anita basically confronts uh, her aide, uh, the agent, uh, uh, Nene's agent, uh, Lee Linho's his name. So, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Lee. And, uh, Eventually, so they they make their they start making their escape as Joker detonates the bombs that Junior set up in the basement, <laughs> uh, which is causing the building to start collapsing. Everyone's escaping. Uh, there's a tidal wave of ink that comes out, and as Maggie basically has been fight is basically fought uh, Wong to a standstill, and she escapes, and Wong gets just drowned in this torrent of ink, uh, ending him. Yeah. And it's it's pretty cool, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it ends up basically the damage from the explosion ends up sinking most of Hong Kong. Yeah. Yes, they sink Hong Kong. Not a building. Hong Kong is gone. Yeah, Hong Kong, because apparently the Dokushensha uh, HQ was holding up Hong Kong? Yeah, like it's, it's a load-bearing evil hideout. Yeah, talk about load-bearing buildings, dear lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they, they do the whole thing where, um, obviously, they're, they're trying to escape and all the rest of it. They're, they're all separated at this point, but um, Lin... Uh, sorry, Lee... Um, you know, they're, they're heading for the, for the exit, but Lee says, you know, actually, I kind of know what's going on. Um, head to the roof. It'll be more safe. It'll, it'll be a better idea. This whole building sinking. And it's at this point where you know the last of the guards come round the corner, start opening fire. Um, he returns fire, and uh, um, uh, Anita obviously throws a few blades and all this kind of thing. Um, and it's at this point that Lee. Uh, it turns out that Lee has actually been hit, because of course he is. Yeah. It's the, it's this typical story. He's, you know, he's uh, he's the bad guy that's now reformed. He's apologetic and sorry for what he's done, but because we don't have time to go through that whole moral uh, thing afterwards and how somebody like that handles that in the real world, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> we get this great fucking scene. God damn it, these writers, where he's like, he puts a cigarette in his mouth. Uses the lighter that he gave her, and as, as they walk away, you know the lighter drops from his from his hand. Fucking John Woo flies by. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which <laughs> 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 is aptly named. <laughs> John Woo is a Great white scene, is a white pigeon. No, it's, he's yes. basically a dove. So yeah. 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 Uh, and yeah, we get to the roof. Um, basically, find a find a somewhere to you know to, to hang on from and wait. And eventually, the other two uh, show up in a paper boat because of course. Yeah, my And rescue them. 
and that's that's basically the first half of the series. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they sunk Hong Kong as a halfway point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then shit gets weird. Yeah, and then it kicks on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so the second half of the series revolves around the British Library's plot plans, which is what's been going on the whole time, Joker's plan, to basically, you know, resurrect Mr. Gentleman who's been who died. Uh, and has apparently stuffed his knowledge into these these books that they've been tracking down. Which yeah, say, Mr. Not that they've been tra tracking down, but they've been using Tokusensha to track down. Right. Because they yeah. need a little... <laughs> Mr. Gentleman is some kind of... Um, he's, he, I don't, he's not so much a higher being, he's still human, but he's basically, like I say, he was literally the power behind the throne. Yeah, he's a genius... Uh, like super genius and like they and he and the library come up with technologies to extend his life for a long time but eventually his health fails and he passes away yeah not not only even even just like a super genius but like uh, by all accounts tremendously charismatic to the point where he inspires some of the the, the the greatest authors of all time and simply by being in the same room as them like yeah basically take all the mental stats uh, and D&D &D and crank them to 32 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um, and as it came to the point where they realised that they couldn't keep him alive um, with technology like or by, years. <laughs> by conventional means they they basically they yeah they, they separate him into uh, you know his, his physical form and his mental capacity and, and store him essentially on books yeah they store all his wisdom and knowledge in these books and their plan is to basically and the the whole great man incident, incident sort of you know gives them this plan to you know take to to effectively create another great man as a sort of tabula rasa to to plunk all his knowledge into and to re, basically recreate him. Yeah, yeah. The to, to, to build they use the great man technology to build a body capable of holding his wisdom. And right. They re because they they tried they tried doing it with with other people and it just it didn't work. He, he, he's too big of a dude. His, and, know, his... the, and the Dokusensha, um like language program was the prototype for their uh, downloading hit uh, Mr. Gentleman's personality into a new bo a new host. Yeah. Yeah, personality and knowledge, they, they, yeah, basically downloading his brain into a new body, basically. Yeah, they, they were literally doing it one book at a time just to see if anyone could handle him. They couldn't handle that. And there's seven books. Right, and oh, one of them is one of them is still missing. Yes, the book of the All Seeing Eye, I believe. Right, and so basically, the sisters and NNA go back to Japan because, um, well, they're kind of wanted for uh, questioning about the whole Hong Kong sinking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so their home, their home in Hong Kong isn't there anymore. Yeah, Hong, no, Kong, Hong Kong isn't there anymore. Gone. <laughs> They're wanted for questioning in this clear and obvious terrorist attack, which is code for yeah, we're going to nail you guys to the wall. <laughs> so they're on the run in Japan, um, and uh, Nene basically finally ha has finally decided that she's actively going to try to track down Yomiko because she's you know she so she starts asking questions. They, they get a lead and eventually find Yom. They eventually do find Yomiko. Who's hiding out in the J Japanese Diet Library? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which has been there. She's been there for the last five years. Because of course she's hiding out of the library. Duh. Where else? Where else would she be? <laughs> uh, and they find her there, and she's there with this other woman, Nancy. Yeah. Which is again from the OVA. Um, uh, uh, it's a little bit more complicated to uh, to explain, but essentially, Nancy was a. Her full name is Nancy Makuhari. She's basically a great man based on Matahari, so, uh, you know, double agent spy. Um, she was in the in the OVA. She was the you know she was the. Is she on our side? Is she not? No, she's not. But she really likes us, so now she is. Oh my God! She's had a huge brain incident, and now she has the mind of a child. Yeah, uh, she she gets brain cooked. Yeah, so 
Nancy, sorry, um, uh, Yomiko basically takes it upon herself to look after her and, and help her out. Hence why at this point, you know, five years later, she's just living with her, trying to help her and learn and teach her and, and educate her and all this kind of stuff and, and get her back on her feet. And by this point, Nancy is mostly functional as a normal person mentally. Yeah. Yeah, she, she doesn't handle uh, Yomiko not being around that much. No. And she, and she doesn't like stress and, and stressful situations. But in general, if you have any conversation with her, she's like, yeah, okay. I understand the basics. Right. Uh, and it turns out that Yomiko, when she left the British Library, because she did, uh, she legged it with the uh, the Book of the All-Seeing Eye. <laughs> yeah. She Be- saw the earning in the wallet and went, yeah, that's, that's, that's gotta go. <laughs> you people are actually evil. Fuck. <laughs> uh... <laughs> She, you know, and so they're saying they're having talking, and then Joker shows up. Yeah, because obviously Joker figured out where she was pretty quickly, really. Because you know he he's the head of a spy agency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do it. <laughs> so he walks in. He has agents armed with water cannons to shut down their paper, the paper master abilities, and like he's like, "Up, oh, all right, yeah." So uh, okay, so uh, Yomiko, you're. Give, give me the book and come back and rejoin us, you know, at at the library. It'll be, everything's fine. It'll be great. And Yomiko's like, no, no, you, what you guys are doing is wrong. No, I'm not going to. And like, so it looks like you know he's got the upper hand. He's like, well, fine. If you're gonna make make it diff- if you'll do it the making me do it the hard way, and he starts to leave. And at which point he very quickly learns the the um, the how much lack of wisdom he'd had in this one situation to confront four paper masters in a fucking library. Yes. <laughs> As, you know, basically, Maggie basically, you know, Anita runs up, Maggie basically vaults her over overhead onto the guys with the guns, Maggie cuts their guns to pieces, and then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Joker escapes... But, but isn't a poor mood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I imagine no small part of this is realizing, God damn it, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> a large Not the smartest move. It's one of his rare mistakes. Be, to be fair, for, well, the bad guys generally, you know, you know, the British Library and Dokusensha. Almost everything they do, you can see the logic of what they're doing, and it's usually really well planned out. Mm. Yeah. It's just that they're up against people who are also smart and have superpowers. <laughs> yeah, and one of the jokes, if he's got a flaw, it's his arrogance. Yes. He's he's very prone to basically just saying, yep, yeah, things will work out exactly as I planned. Because they almost always do. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's a reason I mean, like, he's arrogant. Yeah. He is you not... see the sort of... A little bit later on, you see the sort of convoluted... Because, you know, this sort of attitude and behavior is, is passed on to Wendy, and we, we see a moment a little bit later on, which we'll get to, where you just see just how convoluted and, you know, double-cross the, 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 the way that they operate really is. Yep. So... The you know our our heroes end up linking up with Drake again because you know of course they do. Mm-hmm. He ba- he helps bail well, them out. That's, that's not for a while, is it? That's that's not until um, they get flushed out. Yeah, well, it, it, it's it, there's stuff that happens there that's not crucial to discuss. Is the thing I'm, I'm sort of skipping ahead a Fair bit. Enough. Yeah, because okay. they eventually you know they're on the run still constantly, and eventually they yeah. link up with Drake and. You know, Drake bails them out in a situation, and they, you know, they're they're on the run more. The important bit is after the whole confrontation at the library, we, which I, the one thing we should talk about, uh, is Joker's like, fine, tell has Wendy enact up uh, their current plan, Operation Fahrenheit four fifty one. Yeah, uh, wherein they, you know, the British Library troops go into, you know, uh, Jimbo Yo, the book district where they the, the most stories taken place so far. And they just get take all the books from all the booksellers and pile them in this giant pile in the middle of the square and set them on fire. 
yeah, everything. Books, magazines, yeah. postcards, anything that's, that's and even with a printed word and, on it. It's and print, and printed fire. word, yeah. Put in the fire. And it's about this point where the, the they reveal their their well, not to the world, but they reveal in, in to, to the audience is basically what they're trying to do. What it sounds like they're trying to do is essentially the internet. That's what it sounds it's, like at first. Yes. At first, yeah. It's basically it's it's mass communication. Um, Information available to all, and getting rid of the you know it's it's the the information is the important part, not the medium. So the books are irrelevant, and we'll get rid of the books. Right. Um, and at the time it came out, around about two thousand, so it would have been written in the late nineties. That was probably a th 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 basically that was the time where that sort of talk. I mean, they they make references to the internet throughout the show. They talk about it existing. Mm. Yep. But this is a more sort of big thing that's like literally just like, yeah, we're going to make sure this information is available to everyone. Always. All the time. You will not need an internet connection because this is how we're doing it. Because we're awesome. Yeah. It gets a bit more sinister than that as we go on, but yeah. Right. So, yeah, the the, the big bonfire, you know, freaks Yomiko out. She's like, oh my god, why would you do this? This is so horrible. And Maggie basically, you know, and Wendy, she's saying this to, to Wendy, and Wendy's like, "Look, it's, this is punishment. For, this, this is in some ways punishment for what you did to us, because it turns out that she, you know, and it, you know, uh, you know, when she left, she accidentally caused the entire British Library basically to burn down." Yeah, yeah, she kind of, kind of lost it. <laughs> and you know, Anita's sitting there watching, and she's throughout this whole we have flashbacks. To Anita's sort of seeing, you know some building on fire and like just this horrible trauma which ties into her hatred, yeah. hatred of books uh, and it's never really done well with fire right and she's like staring at this going and she sees like you know Yomiko standing in front of this giant pile of burning books and such and she starts flashing back to the to that again and she's like okay Yomiko's slightly tied to this I don't know how <laughs> uh yeah, and then seeing Yomoko backlit by fire, it's like, oh, oh, flashback time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So they end up uh, in a cabin, sort of hiding out actually in Yomoko's old family home. Which, you know, Yomoko basically you know killed all their records of her past, so she doesn't think the British Library has access to you know, knowing where they are. Mm-hmm. But Junior's followed them because Junior's been on the tra tracking this is tracking the last book for for the library, um, and so he sneaks in uh, and tries to steal the book. And <laughs> yeah, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is that Junior is also powered. Junior has a superpower. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Junior yeah. can phase through solid objects. Right, which makes him yes. good at his job. <laughs> Which instantly triggered me and uh, well, me and Eric at the very least, because that power set is the exact same that Nancy had. Yes. In the OVA. Right. That was her powers. She was actually known. Uh, Yomiko was known as the Paper, and Nancy was known as Miss Deep, which is a ridiculous name, but essentially because she could dive through objects. Right. <laughs> she makes a comment during the OVA. It's like it's like some sort of porn star's name. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it turns out that you know Junior. Um, I mean, it's one of those things. That it, it's not spoiling. It's obvious. He's got the same hair color as Nancy and has the same power set. Um, <clears throat> and he tries to infiltrate and tries to grab the book. And Nancy just quick as a flash reacts, grabs his hand, and he finds he can't face through her. And Junior is freaking out because that's the first time he's not been able to do that. And she draws a gun on him, and quick as a flash, the old muscle memory kicks in, and she disarms him. He, and he's like, "What the fuck? No one's ever been able to do that before." Uh, how? How? <laughs> and yeah, it's basically so showing that Nancy, although, like I say, she had her brain fried, she hasn't forgotten the skills. She doesn't doesn't know that she knows them to use them, so to speak. Right. Or doesn't have the inclination to use them. Right. So um, there's the big yeah, but yeah, she's she's basically everything that Junior is with about thirty years more experience. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so Junior's sitting there freaking out. He still he does still have his gun at this point. 
And Yomoku comes out, no, don't shoot her, she's your mother. And Junior's like, wait, what? What? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they're all, so we have lots of sort of introspection, and they are they basically sit there sort of talking about what's about the book. They, fa- at this point, found out what the plan is uh, involving yeah. the book, because, you know, roughly, and, you know, that you know, it's supposed to be implanted into, you know, Yomiko actually, re- at this point, reveals what's going on, is what it is, because she knows. And, she, and this is the reason she booked it, she liked it with the book from the British Library. She's like, fuck these people. And like you know, they're explained, and it turns out Junior is the one they're going to be t- the, that they're planning to transplant the not transport Mister Gentleman into. And Junior's like, "Uh, what? No." Yeah, the whole issue was that she went in. She went to the library to to request them to return Nancy's Nancy's child. Right. And they did the whole no, no, no. He's very important. Uh, and again, one of those moments where the fucking writers are in our heads. We were like, "Well, hang on." This was only five years ago. He can be what? They, even if you're talking about the Great Man incident, Junior should only be about six, if that. And we were basically like saying... literally the next th- line. What, what? And, yeah, and I one said... One of you said, one I of said, you said it was like, uh, it's probably like uh, age acceleration th- treatment or something. And then the very next line, Drake said, yeah, it's probably age acceleration treatment or something. <laughs> <laughs> Damn these! <laughs> the writers are good at this. Meanwhile, Eric has been going on about like they should just burn the book, and then Nanny Day says we should burn the book. Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, we were saying yeah, but the book lovers, um, uh, um, Yomiko and the girl, the other girls, they're not going to want to burn that book. The very next line, maybe we should just bury it. No. Get out of my heads. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how it's just amazing how often that happened. We were literally like writing the story in our heads. The, the guys, I'll give full credit to the guys that wrote this. They have, I mean, considering what's coming up as well, they have an absolute mastery over the narrative. Yes. They, it, yeah. So yeah, they uh, they agree they're going to bury it in the morning. Which, to which my reaction is, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> the bad guys are going to show up and take it away from them. They're going to show up before you could do that. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, the bad guys show up before they could do that. <laughs> one, one thing I will mention as well, another little throwaway comment that we added uh, during this, is like, I think, was it Peter, you came out with, you know, you know, you do realize that more than likely the book's going to be fireproof anyway. Yes, that was me. Yeah. And then you know we go from we go from there, and then yeah, the the, the bad guys find them. Right. So because apparently Junior's got a tracker in him, and he's aware of this. Um, one of the bad guys' agents, Mister Mirror, who has got the ability to multi- to screw around with light refraction, so he can make himself basically put up holograms around himself to look like anybody, or become invisible. It turns out, uh, yes. basically goes in and confronts Junior and gets Junior to basically to agree to, you know, to betray the to betray, betray the group. Um, and so they basically gas most of them and disappear and but they don't have the book because they don't know where where uh, Yomiko put it. Because she hid it before they were going to bury it. Because Yomiko is actually smart. <laughs> I mean, all of them are, but you know, they had Yomiko hide it. And so he disguised himself as Nene, and they left Anita and Yomiko behind on this for this group so specifically, so the two of them could freak about where the hell everybody is gone, and go find the book. At which point he reveals that, ha ha, that's where you hit it, and reveals himself. Right. And you know, at this point, you know, uh, Anita basically has decided she really, really doesn't like, Yom- like Yomiko because she's they've had a, they've had the, they when Junior handled the book, they he had this sort of weird hologrammatic projected flashback of what happened so and Anita was at the library when it burned down it turns out yes. and so Anita basically said yeah I, I I hate her she is one who's caused all this pain in my life screw her uh, and you know fair enough and Yomoko's like yeah I, I, I totally don't blame you but you know and they're sitting there, okay, well, all right, there's this guy here who's trying to kick our, kick our asses. 
I don't, we don't, like, I don't like you, but we have to work together to beat him. <laughs> and again, we have somebody who can at least become invisible fighting a pair of paper masters in a room filled with books. <laughs> yeah. So they kick his ass and go after the group. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a really clever little thing. They, they, they line the floor with paper, and as soon as they hear some movement, uh, Yomiko throws ink on him to, to track him down. And he's like, ah, right, there he is. And he gets fucking plastered to the wall. Yes. With paper. <laughs> with paper. And, like, King Anita jumps on him, like, bodily on his chest, with a knife, with, well, with a blade at his throat. And he's like, you know, he might as well piss in his pants because if it wasn't for Yuri, uh, Yomiko being there, she would have probably killed him. Yeah. Yep. And, uh,. I believe I said at the time this will, the fact that they did it will probably come back to bite them slightly. Yes. <laughs> at any rate, so while all this going on, so basically, you know, they go off. So the two of them go after them and go after pursuit after you know Junior and the rest of them. Um, and you know he basically explains that Junior betrayed them, and you know, so Anita's livid because you know Anita's very hot tempered. Yeah. Yomiko makes a gigantic paper plane out of a whole bunch of paper because, of course, she does, and she's not as innovative at creating, you know, flying objects as uh, Maggie is. Yomiko is a powerful, yeah. a very powerful general generalist. She can do basically. Yeah, she can do pretty much everything that the other girls can do, but she's not as good at any one specific thing as they are. She just has more raw power. Um, so they go chasing after the after Junior in his helicopter. Uh, the helicopter that he's in, and he keeps looking back at the rest of the the people he's betra he's betrayed and such. But he's had a plan this whole time, so he basically ends up you know taking out the the pilot of the chopper, lands, gets them all out, takes the chopper back up, rips out his rips out the track, faces his hand into his own chest to pull out the tracking device, disables it, and then blows up the chopper. Which, unfortunately, he doesn't know that Yomiko and Anita are following them. So he doesn't know that he th that it looks like that they're all dead to 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 the to, to their friends. And so they're saying, "There's like, oh my god, you know, Anita and you know, they're just, like Anita's just freaks the fuck out, and she hurls the book of all book of all seeing eye into the into the burning wreckage of the chopper." And then she basically, she basically, at this point, she basically tells Yomiko that she absolutely hates her and wants nothing to do with her ever again. Go away, I hate you. Mm. And, you know, we have another, we have an episode of basically, you know, the other important bit we see is that we see sort of, you know, we're looking at the, you know, stuff inside your Joker's office, and we see a clipboard with the you know, thing about Junior. And then there's this other little bit on the side that has a picture of Anita that says, you know, plan B effectively. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh dear, oh no. And at this point, the 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 groups kind of split up just to avoid capture, sort of thing. So we've got Junior and Michelle are off in one um, area. Um, it's uh, Drake, Maggie, no, no, not Maggie, uh, Drake, um, and, and Nancy, I believe. And Nancy in another. Um, Maggie and uh, Nene. Nene have gone off in another direction. Um, the, be the important thing is that the sisters are split up. Yeah. And they, they, they basically, while they're split up, they get, a, one way or the other, at different points, they get given the revelation of, of what that plan B thing meant. Right. Uh, so, you know, uh, eventually... Uh... Uh, Drake, Nancy, Junior, and Michelle link up. Yeah. Uh, and they capture Joker. Yes. Um, Their plan is to basically hold jo Joker hostage to get the U.S. Special Forces that have also tracked them there to fuck off. Right. Yeah. Because the British Library just basically, and I believe the term is um, what is it? Can we can, can we commandeer the U.S. military? Yes. Not a squad, 
No, we want the we want to commandeer the forces of the U.S. military. Now, at this point, we we see interactions with the president of the United States between Joker and him. Yeah. And Joker is clearly playing things as he's that you know England's a wreck. I'm setting things up so that you guys can be in charge. Totally. Yes. Totally believe me. I'm completely trustworthy. This is the truth. Honest. Uh, honest. Honest, honest. Every, now, honest he never actually says that's what he's doing, but he's implying it. Because he's yes. pulling the whole, I'm going to tell you things that are factually true, but I am lying through my teeth. Yeah. Yes. I, I, it, it's that whole, you know, I, 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 I never tell a lie. And I never I never speak the non-truth. You're just not getting the right information. <laughs> Well, I never choose to go but everything I say is a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Joker's a manipulative bastard. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> so Wendy comes up with a plan because she's because they, they know roughly where everybody is. Uh, you know, uh, Anita's gone back to school and no one there remembers her because uh, the other important bit is that the British Library has now set up test things for their they're building these weird antenna things. They're building. They basically create these test centers in various areas for testing out their ro the rollout plan of what they're actually planning to do. And one of them is the area where, and one of them includes the school where where uh, Anita went to school. And she goes back there, and she sort of goes and goes sees her friend, and she doesn't remember her. And like the class seems just slightly different, and everything's off and weird. And then the really loud like. Up front one is, uh, you know, is the quiet type in the in the class. The 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 girl that used to push her sister, who was also a writer, used to push her sister's book all the time. It's like she was super proud and like trying to give these copies away to anyone that would have them. Now is like really embarrassed and shy about her sister being this celebrity. She doesn't really want to to say much about it. It's everything is just it's the same but different. Right, and. So, and, and she's sitting there, and she's sort of looking out the window, sort of forlorn about and wondering what's going on, when Wendy walks in, and basically explains that, you know, tells her that, you know, we've, you know, if, you, if you're willing to help us, we've created this, you know, this utopia for you, this is, you know, it's this perfect dream for you, and Anita's like, the fuck? And this is where she reveals to her what's, hap what, what's actually happened. With between with the sisters. Every, wait a minute, did I zone out and completely miss the bit about the what's going on with the sisters? We no, we're getting to, I'm getting to that right the right now. Okay. Because it's revealed to all three of them in separately. Yeah. Um Joker reveals it to uh Michelle. And so but I, I want to get to the stuff that leads up to this. So Joker's being held hostage and so Wendy's like, okay, I gotta get Joker out of there. How am I gonna do this? Well, we've got this footage of... We've got this footage of Anita fighting the, the special... Uh, the, the soldiers. Right. So, yeah. We know where Maggie and Nene -Nay is, so I'll approach Maggie and go, give me Nene -Nay -Nay, and I'll give you uh, Anita, because we have her captured. <laughs> and Maggie is just broken by this. Yeah. But she's like, I can't betray Nene, Nene, but, but, but it's she's my sister. She's I like, get, I have to save uh, Anita, but I can't betray Nene, Nene. I have to save Anita, but I can't betray Nene. Nene. And so she Nene comes Nene out. Being badass that she is. Yeah. So she figures the whole fucking thing out. She comes walking. So yeah, Maggie comes walking out of the bathroom to basically take take her down but she she decides not to like try to trick her down she basically says okay look I'm gonna I have I, I have to I'm taking you down I'm turning you over to the British Library and Nene looks at her and goes okay so who have they taken hostage Michelle or, or Anita <laughs> <laughs> because you know Maggie's standing there with like paper a paper weapon in her hand tears streaming down her face <laughs> And like she's like, how did you know? She's like, I'm a writer. I can read this sort of thing. Also, it's you. Come on. <laughs> There's no way you do this unless it was unless it was one of those who were in trouble. And you know what? Just take me down there. I'll go down there willingly because you know I, I care about them too. I I can't let this happen. Come down, Nene's awesome. She <laughs> is the fucking best. She's 
fucking kick ass. And you know what? They, they never they never go over the line with her, so she's awesome, but she's never broken. Yeah. No, she it's is. Zero lighting back, God. <laughs> yeah, she's never she's never like um, overpowered. I know everything that's going on. It's not so much the intelligence that she she obviously has, but it's just the defiance of the situation. Yeah, and she she is. Uh, she is probably the single most badass person in the series, and she doesn't do a single physical thing once. It is yeah. all just willpower and brains. Mm -hmm. And just defiance. I, God, and bravery. She's awesome. She's just this glorious character. I love her. Uh, <laughs> so she basically, you know, could, she she talks with Wendy and she works out a, a deal. No, and it's very clear that she's pretty aware that you know Nancy's going to betray her. <laughs> that uh, Wendy, sorry, is going to is going to betray it all because she's like, yeah, I know what's going to happen. There's I there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> but I'm yeah, I'm going to play along and just sort of try to set things up as best I can. Um, so at any rate, uh, at which point you know she gasses Maggie, so she's fall asleep as they leave because Maggie was going to come with them because she was insisting and you know Wendy's like yeah no <laughs> because Wendy again is not stupid <laughs> Wendy is very competent very smart her plan is very good <laughs> and she's like okay I can't bring Maggie with me because she's just go if there's ever a situation where she could do something, she will. She's dangerous. I have to cut her out of this. Also, I'll now right. leave behind this thing, documenting the secret between behind the three sisters to break her. Blah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, so they basically, they, they, they slip her something in a drink just to to knock her out so they can take Nene. And, and yeah, they, like you say, they leave her, they leave the document so that, you know, just so she can read and find out what's, what exactly is going on. Right, and so Joker basically t is t telling telling them about this. Oh, no, that's 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 what it is. Is I believe Anita and Yomoko had made it to that to the building also at that point. Yeah, they did. They cap they're the ones that captured Joker. Right, that's what yeah. it is. Right, the, so the airplane cannon. So, so that's right. She, so it's it's Nanane. Uh, sorry, sorry. It's, it's when the attack starts, Junior of uh, with the the special forces, Junior and legs it with Michelle. So Junior is the one who fills Michelle in, and Joker tells. Uh, Anita. Yeah. And we find out the secret. Which is... The secret, the, the secret is that during the Great Men incident, Dokushenka basically nicked all their the, the genetic research, including on the paper masters. And yeah. decided to shortcut growing them with implanting the, the uh, implanting the genes in, into subjects. Yeah, and... So well, Anita is a a great man. Essentially, she's she's a natural. No, legit. she's not a great man. She's just a natural born paper master. I yeah, well, yeah, sorry, she, she's not gene engineered at all. No, but she, she she was a natural born uh, paper master no, under the control. But she was from the British Maggie Library. Are, uh, are engineered. They they basically had the uh, the gene therapy, and their personalities rewritten so that they could do it. <laughs> yeah. Right, because the their their initial sort of created paper men. All went mad and just didn't. It didn't work. So like, fuck. Right. Oh, what if we try creating groups of them so they can like work together and reinforce each other and keep themselves sane? And so, and they kid, they found Anita after the fire, fire, and so they paired her up with the other two, rewrote their memories so they remembered the the meeting we saw in the the Christmas story, which according to Joker is a complete fabrication. We don't know that it's complete fabrication, but we never see Joker actually say anything factually incorrect. So it probably was a fabrication. Hmm. And like, yeah, all your memories are lies. You're not sisters. You were put together as a team by Dokusensha. Yeah, the only the only thing that we know is true is up to the point where we, they where they met Nene. That's that's literally it. That's that's from there on we know everything has happened is true. And so it's like, and you know, so you know, Anita is like crushed by this. Like, they're not my sisters. They never were my sisters. Everything's a fucking lie. Oh my god, I hate everything. I hate all of you. Uh, you know, and Junior tells Anita and she's she you know, Junior tells uh Michelle and she's, you know, Michelle. and and then he basically 
sees that the choppers are coming to take them, and he basically goes off to basically let them take him, take him, so she, Michelle doesn't get captured. And Maggie is just sitting there, just crushed by this with the book because yeah. she's failed to protect uh, Nene, Nene, and then she finds out, you know, this this horrible secret. And so Anita ends up wandering around and staying at like she's basically been go, goes back to school again, and you know ends up and it turns out you know Dokes, you know the library doesn't need her anymore. So she's like yeah whatever fine you can stay at the school be happy there whatever we're ignoring you we've got our plan. And you know so she basically is staying at she basically is you know staying at Nene's place you know on mm-hmm. her own. And so she goes back there after school one day, and Michelle's gone there because Michelle's like praying that one of the three of them, one of the other two, would be there at some point. And you know, Anita just freaks out and's like, you know, she's like, "You're not my real sister. This is all fake." And Michelle's like, "But," trying to like try to get through to her. And you know, Maggie walks in the door, just blocking Anita's way out, and just embraces her and just holds her there while the while Michelle talks her into says, "How dare you say we're not actually sisters? It doesn't. Yeah. The fact that it's that that it was fabricated doesn't matter. What matters is what." Say, Sorry, guys, go. The whole go. point of it is they they were never sisters. They were never actually sisters to begin with, even in their own fantasy. Right. Right. Um, the only thing that's changed is just how they met. And it's like, yeah, maybe we were, per- maybe maybe that was they were created to be to, to, for this to to do this. But the bonds that they formed since that point are real, and they have become family. Yes, and that's what they want. They want the, you know, Michelle wants you know to be their big sister, and you know Maggie's like, I want to be you know Michelle's little sister and your big sister, and Anita's like. And it, it it finally that the sort of the three of them sort of sitting there in tears, begging Anita to to, to accept them. Finally, cracks and eat, cracks through Anita. Yeah, she goes that way and they're like, "Well, I guess there's only you know there's only me that can actually be the little sister to you two. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, three sisters conference. Shall we go save Nanda and Junior? Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yomiko, Wendy, and Drake have are are also off to London in a speedboat. Well, not Wendy. Not Wendy. Yomiko, uh, Drake. Uh, Yomiko, Drake, and Nancy. Sorry. Yes. Oh, Nancy. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, sorry. And so they're speeding over, and you know, they're going over, and you know, of course, Maggie builds a giant, you know, the builds a giant dragon golem thing, and goes sail. Blue paper dragon, yeah. Right, blue paper dragon, and you see them. She are <laughs> flying over their speedboat, and they drop a little paper note saying, "Sorry, we're going ahead of you." <laughs> <laughs> And then the show gets weird. Really fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> because they arrive in London, and it's the 1800s, as near as anything can tell. <laughs> and we're not kidding. I was not kidding when I said they're wielding the power of narrative. So it's literally what they start doing. They start using the, the preserved brains of great authors throughout British history to rewrite reality as they draw in the essence of... of, uh, of Mr. Gentleman's Mr. knowledge, Gentleman, both from the books yeah. and from the atmosphere where the excess was diffused, because they can do that. <laughs> so, well, like, I mean, they, they land, they land, and they get run over by a steam train. Well, yeah. they don't land; they're not in the air by a pterodon. Oh yes, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, from the Lost World. Right, from yeah, the Lost World. They're nearly, uh, and they're nearly spotted by a Martian tr- war tripod. <laughs> from War of the Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, they are wielding the power of narrative. <laughs> Literally, it's yeah, great! The U.S. military t- try an attack and their entire uh, war fleet is wiped out by a UFO. <laughs> it's just like, wait, what the f- It's glorious! And so, and... They end up linking up with the other three in London, uh, and they're like, okay, we gotta find out where the fuck the library is. How the hell are we gonna do that? Uh, because our maps are useless. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the maps we brought with us are from night from two thousand. It's the eighteen fifty six or something like that now. Yeah, the only things that are still here are the things that were here then: Buckingham right. Palace, the you know the House of Parliament, and you know the, the like St Paul's Cathedral, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's like you know, like you know the you know, the the tower that Big Ben's in, and <laughs> and the and you know the Tower of London. <laughs> 
Bradford Bridge isn't there because it wasn't built yet. <laughs> <laughs> but then it, it, they, they realise as they're going through and trying to figure out, you know, what's what's essentially what they're looking for is something that shouldn't be there, something that is out of time. Uh, you know, it's not, but it's not shouldn't be built yet, but it is there because it belongs to the library. It's theirs. The library, of course, is is on a fucking plinth of, uh, you know, in the middle of fucking London City, there's like a, a carved out moat all around it, and it's just the library. But that's not where they're going. They know that. Yeah, they know they're not going directly there. Um, but as they're, as they're going around, they also realize that essentially what's happening is uh, London is progressing through time. Um, and from what I understand, it's basically going back to when Mr. L Mr. Gentleman, it's basically his life. Right, it's going through his life, so basically. It's progressing, through, it's progressing through the dates, and it's approaching, you know, today. And when it gets to today, that's when Mr. Gentleman will be reborn. Right. And so, we also, at this point, find out the full scope of what the plan is. And, oh, it's a doozy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, not only are they trying to resurrect Mr. Gentleman and put, you know, and try to put Great Britain back in sort of a, a, a strong place. No, no, no. That's not the mere extent of their plans. That would be for pikers. <laughs> no, 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 no. Their whole knowledge, knowledge available for everything is part of the plan, too. For everyone, is part of the plan, too. They're going to make sure that, that all the knowledge in the world is available to everybody and rewrite everybody's personality to share the same ideals so there will be peace forever. Yeah. And it'll be led by Mr. Gentleman. And Nene yeah. will be will be you know, we'll, we'll, you know, the perfect language thing, beh, that was a stupid idea. We'll have you meet Mr. Gentleman so you'll be, your, so your, your perfect talent will be awoken and you'll be, you'll basically be his chronicler. You'll be basically be the person who writes his, the Bible for him in his role as Jesus. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's literally shared consciousness. Everyone is mind wiped and has their personality rewritten. And Mr. Gentleman is the, and, and, and that's everyone, including the British Library. Yep. Yeah. Literally, only Mr. Gentleman knows of everything and he is in charge of everything and the world will be to his will. And everything will be peace and happiness and nothing bad will ever happen again. Merely at a, the small, tiny cost of everybody's individuality. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, memories and all that sort of shit. And all their all memories and, you know, every all their life experiences and all that stuff. Moot, gone, irrelevant. Dear fucking God! <laughs> <laughs> yes. And shall we say escalation of a fucking uh, you know evil plan? Yeah. This is like you know, fuck it. We're, we're just yeah reset the world. Yep. <laughs> and of course, for the best intentions. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. Because that's every best. Every, every best. The, the, the best bad guys. If any any time always believe they're in the right. I will firmly believe that. Yeah, it's it's and, and Joker. The best part about Joker is he acknowledges that he's doing things that are shady, <laughs> but that the end goal is the ends justify the means in this in this case. Yes. Yeah. So you know, uh, that our heroes break into the t basically they stumble across Mister Kim, who's changed sides and decided with the library because, of course, he did. <laughs> yeah. You saw the writing on the wall. He was like, no, they're going to win. <laughs> so they force him to smuggle them in. And we go from sort of 1850s London, because they find the place eventually. It's a train station that shouldn't have existed at that time. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's a train station. Those, those exist at this time. Wait, no, that train station, that, but that the train, the underground was very small at that point, and this wasn't one of the places. Oh, yeah, those. They're like, yeah, no, no. The woman was like, yeah, London's Underground did exist at this point. London's Underground is like one of the oldest, it is the oldest in the world. And one of the others was like, yeah, but that was like Waterloo to Paddington. That was one line. This one wasn't here for another 20 years. They're like, oh. Oh, hey, look, oh. It's, it's Mr. Kim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Kim's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, he comes up out of the, uh, out of the, the station and he goes, Huh. Turns around, tries to walk away. <laughs> He's like, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Damn it, they got me. <laughs> so, you know, 
he's he uh, he basically unwill he basically realizes that I really have no choice but to smuggle them in. And never mind, what the hell can they do? There's no way this plan can possibly fail. And if it does, <laughs> meh. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'll find some way to come out on top of all this. So you know they infiltrate the place. Uh, you know, uh, Junior and and uh, Nene are in cells opposite from one another. And Nene has been writing a new book for you know for for the for the sisters and for uh, Yomiko. And she says you know and Junior's like, why do you seem so upbeat? She's like, well, you know, I know they're coming for me. The sisters are coming to save me. And Junior's like, how the fuck do you know that? And she's like, I just believe in them. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the whole the whole thing. I think the line that she uses is like, yeah, he's like, how can you write at a time like this? And it's like, well, because that's what I do. When I get nervous or you know anxious, I, I like to write and get it out, get this, get it out of my head and onto paper. Plus, I know the storm that's coming. <laughs> that's the word that she uses. And he's like, what do you mean? He said, well, you think they're not gonna come? <laughs> and he's like, well, I really wish I had people believe me. Ble- ble- were- do that for me. She's like, she's like, you know, they're coming for you too, right? And he's like, but I betrayed them. Yeah, and that's the kind of people they are. Yeah, but again, Nene has absolute confidence. She's like, yeah, they're gonna come, and it's gonna be huge. <laughs> <laughs> but the, my favorite part about it is about that sort of that comment, or her belief in that, is the utter belief that Joker and Wendy have that the revelation of that they were not sisters and their all their pasts are fake would break the three sisters and they would not be able to do this. Yeah. And to be fair... Apparently she's never read a book in her life because this is the kind of thing that galvanizes the heroes. Right! <laughs> it's like, you people are trading literally the power of narrative. You should know better! <laughs> Yeah, they'll have a down moment, but they'll rally through it and come together and fight the good fight because that's what heroes do. So yeah, you know, so Yomiko basically, so the sisters go to save Nene. Uh, Nancy and uh, Drake go off. To, are, are their task is to get jo- to get Junior back and. Yomiko is basically my plan. I'm going to go confront Joker and convince him to stop this because I don't. I we if we, even if we blow up the building, he'll just rebuild. Yeah, we can't just we can't stop him because he'll just do it again. We have to convince him to stop. And so you know, she infiltrates and she tries to like talk to him, and of course that doesn't work because she is the she is confronting Joker, the master of talking. <laughs> Yeah, and this is the thing about Yomiko, she's not a killer. No, um, she's not. She's she's an effective fighter when she's motivated to be, and she's got a blade at his throat, but she... Joker's literally just like saying, well, the, I think the line he used is like, okay, this is a very nice blade you've got here, but uh, unlike you who are unemployed at the moment, I'm busy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! <laughs> if you're going to do something, do it. I've got things to do. And her resolve just cracks. Um, she, you know, she can't talk to him. He's completely dismissive of her, and she's not a killer, so she's not gonna. He knows she's not gonna do anything. Right. Um, and they just carry on, and they just get on with the job. Right. And so we have the big, the big sort of climax, and you know, Joker, you know, brings, uh, brings, you know, brings a. Yomiko into the room where Junior's going to be implanted with the with Mr. Gentleman with Mr. Gentleman's brain, and you know, basically he tells you know, basically sort of you know, he tells he knows that you know the sisters have broken uh, uh, Nene out. He basically says, "Look, Nene, I have Yomiko. If you don't turn yourself in, I'll kill. I'll have her killed." <laughs> and Yomiko and Nene's like, "Fuck, I have to go. You three escape." And they're like, "Fuck that. We're going with you." And she's like, I, I, okay. And so Joker's like, there. So they, they, she's refused to come unless the sisters come with her. And the Joker's like, fine. Search the sisters. Remove all the paper they have. Yeah, and this is where they they show how clever the library is because the the one of the little tricks, those little outfits that the sisters wear, they're made of paper. Right. They're they're wearing like you know they're they're basically wearing like a sports unitards underneath. 
Yeah, they they're always wearing that unitard, but basically everything they wear, more or less, is always made of paper. They did they make their own clothes, and then they show up. They're just in the unitard because they're just smart enough to take the paper off. And, and so the only, one miss, the only one missing at this point is Drake and Nancy, who were still poking around in the in the, the bowels of the uh, the base, basically. Right, and when he finds her old costume from when she was, you know. <laughs> Yeah, she she stumbles in. Obviously, oddly enough, she stumbles into the uh, the archive room that's got all the uh, the great man stuff, which happens to be her old spy outfit. Right. So she switches into that, <laughs> and so you know they go the the process of impl- implanting the knowledge into, into Junior begins. It's about to begin, and like you know Drake, you know uh, Joker gives his speech, and then Nene gives this killer just tear down of everything Joker's talking about and why everything he's talking about doing is completely fucking wrong. Yeah, because if there's one person in this world that can out-talk Joker, it's an enemy. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you're full of you're full of shit. You're talking about how you guys have the willpower to do this? You're just afraid of your own past. Fuck you. You want to just forget your past and go to the future. The only way you can build a real good future is by, by learning from the lessons of your past. Fuck you. You're cowards. Past informs the future. You are idiots. <laughs> and cowards. It's just like, oh, fuck. And, like, you see, like, all the British library staff who are all, like, completely behind this. A lot of them all sort of pause and go, Wait what? a minute. They still move yeah. forward, but she makes this, like, these, these, you know, this these devout followers pause and think because she's that damn good. And that damn right. <laughs> and then she reveals the fact that like, he's like, well, there's nothing you people can do. You don't have any paper. And she says, oh, really? <laughs> Rachel on her shirt pulls out the pages of her novel that she smuggled in with her because they didn't search her. Yes. <laughs> Flings up there for the... Yeah, yeah, she's just now throwing fucking a, a, a full belt of ammunition to the four, the four fucking paper masses in the room. <laughs> and Wendy phases in, and Nancy phases in, and <laughs> the big fight ensues. They take down all the security systems and save Junior from being implanted with the, the knowledge. And, you know, while, while this is going on, Junior's being, having the knowledge forced into all this chaos is ensuing. Junior basically, his phasing powers kick back in because they Shorted off for a while after he took out after he reached into his chest and pulled out the monitoring device in his chest. That that hurt him and it hurt his powers. Yeah. He proceeds to reestablish phasing powers and phase his hand into Joker's head so that Joker could feel the implantation with him, which ages Joker yeah. like immediately. And brain wipes him. <laughs> it's more. It looks like he's basically just been lobotomized there and then. Yeah. It's just it's just like oh fuck. And, you know, so they pull the thing off the junior... Eventually, they, they're cutting away these tendril things that are there to implant the knowledge, the implant gentlemen into them. They rip the, the device off his chest that, that's allowing it to happen, and it ends up in Anita's hand, and it starts tr- basically starting to try to implant the knowledge into her head, and they get it off her and destroy it, and it looks like Anita's dead, but, no, but of course, no, she's not. Yeah. Because this show is not going to, is not going to go, full, go, go full, like, you know modern anime and give us this sort of semi-tragic ending. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I'm so glad they didn't do that. <clears throat> it's, it's one of those weird situations that other than a few minor side characters, they, in this entire show, no one dies other than... Faceless you know, goons. The a, yeah, the occasional goon and in the from the good side, Alice. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, you know, the, the lead cast, the main cast all the way through, start to finish, no deaths. You don't need death. Death is a, a cheap tactic to, to gain. Yeah, I, I will say this. If Anita had died there at the end, it would have been, it would have actually been okay narratively. Yeah. It would have been, but not from the damage that she took, so to speak. Sure. I, I, that, I, thing, that thing was on uh, Junior a lot longer than it was. Oh, I agree completely. But like, had it stuck on her for longer and killed her, I would, I would have, it would have sucked. It would have been sad, but it would have made sense. Yeah. Like the narrative, no, it would have. I'm not saying that, that Anita's Anita should have died. I, I, I agree. She shouldn't have. It was. I, I'm glad she's still alive. But I don't. I, I agree with Peter here. Like, if she had died, it would have made sense. It would have made sense. I would have been okay with it. 
but the ending is better because she doesn't. Yes. Yeah. It's a unmitigated happy ending. And every now and then that's really needed, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, they do put an, uh, Anita especially through the fucking, um, you know, the, the emotional torture ringer. Yeah, yes. it, 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 like, and, you know, it, just, it, it. we had the moment where it looked like she was dead, and just looking at, like, and I, you, you as, a, as a viewer, you're sitting going, she might actually be dead. And, you know, Maggie and Michelle are just crushed. Yeah, they do this thing where she's, where what they're doing is they've reformed their clothes mm. uh, with the paper around them. And as she's lying there on the floor, her her yeah, her outfit is basically falling apart off of her. Yeah. It's disintegrating, yeah. Because yeah. they've got enough control where they, you know, even even unconscious, the, the, the little things like clothes and that sort of stuff stay, stay there. Right. But it's a, it's a case of uh, because they thought she was completely dead and out of it, her her outfit is basically falling apart. It's like it's just reverting back into sheets of paper. Right. And they thought, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. But nope, she she comes to, and they're like, oh thank god. I mean, poor Maggie. Oh my god, she was she looks so just just just. Oh. <laughs> she was broke. She was heartbroken at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And then you need to come back. And she, it's just like this. Oh. I was I was most upset I would have been most upset for Maggie honestly yes yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you know we had so you know it's the, the plan stopped you know the just, device is destroyed and they mentioned you know Mr. Gentleman's in, you know in, his knowledge of it has basically just dissipated it's gone it just can't actually right. ever when, be done when they start the whole procedure they, they mentioned like we only got one shot at this like the the information will be consumed on use. We can't yeah. try this again. Now there is a, there is a movie to follow on from this, and I think I know how they what they've done. I haven't watched it yet, um, but I've got an idea of something because there's a there's a few little bits they do in the coda, just to wrap things up. Um, and one of them seems really out of place until you think about it. Um, and essentially, it's moving on and just showing, you know, where they are, where they've gone. They they have the whole news thing as they're following around, saying that you know, the British Library now being investigated, the the entire plan of the One World Knowledge thing is being dis dismantled and investigated as well. Um, uh, most of the U.S. presidents doing it all just to just to fucking dismantle the British Library, essentially. Um, <laughs> Uh, and you know the whole thing's being dismantled and taken apart, and they're rebuilding the uh, the book district of Japan and all this kind of stuff. And while all this is happening, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Um, Yomiko and uh, and Nene have gone on a bit of a kind of like a world tour sort of thing. Yep. Currently in India, uh, just just seeing the world and actually spending time together because you know Nene, uh, Yomiko disappeared for five years. Uh, Nancy and Junior are. No, Jun Junior's Not staying with uh, Michelle. Junior and Michelle are staying together, but Nancy's getting, sending him regular like letters and all this stuff. Right, because she's, she's traveling the same thing. Right, she's traveling the world trying to find out what her past is. Yeah, she's trying to piece her life back together at the same time. Um, Drake goes back to his family uh, in America. Um, and I think... It, it, I know that... Um, Maggie's not living in the Maggie, same place as, I think Maggie and Anita are living together. Yeah, they're living in, in Nene's apartment. Right. Um, with John Woo. <laughs> yeah, with John Woo, because it's full of books. And Ma we leave Maggie, basically, she's saying, wow, this place is a mess, I should tidy up. Continue reading. Yeah, I, I should tidy up. <laughs> Continue reading. <laughs> but yeah, like, there's a, like, she and, she and Michelle are, have a phone call, phone conversation. It's like, and they've all sort of moved on a bit, and it's but they're still like you, you can still see the bonds between all these characters. Yeah, and the only weird one is that we get a little coda with with um, with Joker. Right, he's sitting um, in a, he's sitting in a chair, eyes glazed over. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I, thought, I don't know what the, I don't know the significance of the dog, but essentially a dog pokes his head up out of the bushes, looks at him, and then fucks off. Barks a few times. This is apparently, yeah, apparently this is the key that uh, Joker's eyes refocus 
he gets him out of his chair and just simply walks away. And we see Wendy sort of walking out, looks ecstatic that he's out of the chair. Yeah. And we don't see anything further with that, but I've, again, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I've got a feeling that was something to do with the, with the, you know, the, the touch that, um, uh, Junior. Junior put on him. Yeah. Um, there's something, I think there's some, that, that'll probably lead into the movie. I'm going to, I'm going to watch that at some point just to find out, but yeah, I think they'll probably lend something in with that, but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. Yep. That's the show. Uh, that's the show. It's a really good show. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, final thoughts. Uh, we'll leave Gav last because it was his recommendations as, as is tradition. So, Eric, you start. Okay, so as far as the animation goes, it's, um, it has its moments of, of being really gorgeous, but they tend to cut a lot of corners, and it, it shows <laughs> that it, it, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it's... It's average for the time period, is what I'll say. There were, there were a few moments where we were, we were basically just watching the screen going, saving animation budget, saving animation Pretty budget. Pretty much, yeah. Um, characters are just staring at each other, no movement. But the but the, the show is carried very well both on the, almost entirely on, on the strength of its characters. The characters are all incredibly well realized, all are very likable. Um, even even kind of like Joker. Honestly. Oh, yeah. It's his superpower because he's got charisma billion. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and, and while it, it while it occasionally has it, its filler, the filler is never wasted. It's always done giving you um giving more in depth char- uh, understanding of the characters involved. And when the plot kicks into high gear, it goes completely batshit insane, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> There were dinosaurs and Martian tripods. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, god! Yeah, the, the strength of the show is really just the, the characters, like like the the three sisters, Nene, uh, Nancy, Yamako, Drake. Yeah, they're, they're all great, and you, through the course of the show, you develop a real a real connection with them. So yeah, I re- I highly recommend this show. Yeah, I'm this in. A good find. I'm in the same boat as Eric. The character of the show, like I love the, the absurdity of the plot. I love the the bizarre, weird super science. I love the sort of the the the, the themes of your know, knowledge as power, and you know, that's mm. all great stuff. But what it boils down to is these characters are great yes. and just so likable, and just you know. From you know this 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 little fire this Spitfire firebrand of of a twelve year old badass in Anita, to the you know the stoic and just, lo- but not even really stoic this this you know this lovable introvert who's this who's you know the backbone of the group in in in, in Maggie, to this 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 ditzy airhead who's a, who's also a you know a genius and a forceful leader in 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 uh, Michelle. To the just unbridled awesomeness that is that is that is Nene. Nee nee. I mean, just those four characters are fan fucking tastic. I love them. I think them. we all agree that Nene nee nee is our favorite character, and that Maggie is our spirit animal. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh my god, uh, this show, man! I I I I I adored. I really had a blast with this show. Uh, it got to the point, you know, it's like, I'm sitting there, I enjoy Joker, I liked him as villain, I found him a, like, a likable character, but I'm sitting there going, oh my god, I, I'm like, I, they, they got me to actually actively be rooting for the good guys to, to, to win. I wanted to see how Joker's plan was going to fail. Yes. And, you know, it's... It's because he's it's, he's a compelling villain, and I found it interesting. And he, I love the, the the sort of some there are parts of his goals I could I, I understood and could go with, but the actual methodology and what the end result was was just so horrific that I it's like I want to see how this fails. I don't know how it's going to fail because the plan is he's actually good well, at his job. Yeah, and he's established as good at his job, and the plan seems sounded like assuming that this insane super science tech is going to work. The plan makes like is going to work. It's like oh. literally the only reason it failed was because of one stupid goon that didn't check everyone at the door. Yeah. <laughs> Take all the paper master's paper. Okay. 
What about the author? Leave her with her book. <laughs> well, they, didn't, they, they didn't even bother searching her. And again, the instructions were very clear. Search, take the paper, the, pa the paper away from the paper masters. Okay. And th I mean, there's a lack of initiative there on the goons' part. <laughs> that's and they followed his instructions to the letter. And and, it makes perfect uh, sense because that's what they're driving towards. Is right. A, a lack of everyone sharing the same ideas and the same points of view leads to a lack of initiative and, and yeah, it, it, it made perfect sense. <laughs> so yeah. Sorry, Peter. Yep, that, that's fine. And Gav, your thoughts? Well, it's weird for me because when I, like I say, when I started, when I looked into this, I was expecting a follow-on story of uh you know, of Yomiko, Nancy, Drake, and, you know, the status quo as it was. Suddenly, I'm into this story where Joker, who was, like I say, he wasn't especially a good guy, but he was on the side of the good guys. He was, he was, like I said, he was the M to um, Yomiko's bomb, so to speak. Um, now, all of a sudden, he's part of the bad guys. Not overtly, not until the end. He was just a, a player in the background, manipulating everything, you know, like the master does. Um... But yeah, we've got the you know it introduces these these brand new characters. You know what? I'm glad it did, um, because using using the original three, you know, the ones that everyone expect to see as side characters, as additional backup, so to speak, to the rookies. That's a clever way of doing it, I think. Um, seeing these three, like you say, the the three completely you know it's chalk cheese and gunpowder you know it's not, there's, no, there's there's couldn't get three more different personalities yet they work together as a family and as a, as a group um and there's no what's the word there's no um no, i won't say conflict but there's no you know you never you never have thought think god why are these even like how how do they even get on? How do they spend a day without? Ag there's none of that, you know. Even though they're very very different people, they still you can tell as a family. Yep. And Nenene just instantly just as much as she doesn't, which she may not want to at the beginning, she just drops straight into it. And again, she's a fourth personality type. She's she's completely different to the other three. But the uh, the dynamic of the group is is just so well written, so well done. They they understand the characters, and as I said earlier, they understand that narrative as well. Because the amount of times, as, I've, as we've said repeatedly, that as a, as an audience member, as a viewer, you're thinking, you know what? It's okay. I get where you're going, but surely someone should. Have, there it is. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, those those questions that naturally come to you in your head. They go, yeah, okay, we're getting there, and then and 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 they'll solve it. But they leave it just long enough for you to have that idea first, and then drop it. So it sucks you into the thing because you think you're 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 thinking on the same lines as these characters. You know, you in this one, you know, you want to burn the book. You're you're the Drake of this of this uh, this situation or whatever. Um, in another, in another one, you know, oh, you're 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 know, thinking like Maggie in this one. It's like. It's so cleverly written, um, and yeah, I mean, this is this is one when I first saw it, and I thought, oh, this isn't the characters that I know. This isn't the OVA. I was like, eh, I'll I'll try and find something else. And as I said at the start, I'm so glad I did. <laughs> I'm so glad I stuck with this one because this is this is this was very good. I, I will recommend this one to anyone. Yep. All right, that's gonna do it for this week. Uh... Thank you so much for watching, uh, listening. Uh, we, uh, as is clear, we all love the show and we all highly recommend it. Uh, so, as, as, as I mentioned, the the OVA is out there. Go watch that as well because it does help. You don't need to, but I would still recommend. Yeah, it. As, as someone who did not watch the OVAs, the show stood on its own perfectly fine. But I imagine the yeah. watching OVAs would have been nice also. So, at any rate, though, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed the show and it's interested on YouTube, feel free to hit like and subscribe. That way you know when new episodes will be com will come out. Uh, we rec when we record the shows, we record on Monday nights at roughly 7 p.m. Eastern here on hitbox.tv slash mecha-gm. 
Um, we will be... I tweet out when the show's going to go live. My Twitter handle's at MechaGM. Uh, so if you keep an eye on that, you'll know when I'm about to stream anything. Uh, yeah, next week... We're next time, Not next week. Next time, uh, we'll be covering my, ne- my most recent recommendation, which is going to be um, a bit different than a lot of stuff we've been doing recently. <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing... Um, Kuroko no basketball. The basketball which Kuroko yeah, plays. Yeah. We're going to make a sports fan out of Eric. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, you, you guys watch that. <laughs> See, this is the thing. I think we found your button, Eric. You're, you're throwing all this misery and everything out at us. Fair enough. I dropped Saikano on you. But King of Misery, now we've got your button. We've got sports anime. <laughs> <laughs> you guys watch that. I'll uh, I'll totally also be watching that. Uh-huh. Awesome. You, better be. you better be. You better be, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you better be. That's going to do it for this week, guys. Thank you so much again, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.